Alien Biopriest, Michael Sinclair II as Eli, the Misagi Lightbringer, Christina Ariel as Sila 919, the Monsagene Biopriest, and Eugenio Vargas as the Storyteller, as they travel the stars, defend their homes, and treat everyone they meet luxuriously. Welcome to the Motherlands. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome back to the season finale of Into the Motherlands. My name is Eugenio Vargas. I am DM Jazzy Hands, and I'm going to be your storyteller for this evening. Thank you so much for being here. This has been such a journey for the five of us that you see on screen and the entire development team. Those of you who have been here since episode one, we thank you. Those of you who stumbled in here for the first time tonight, we thank you. Uh, all of the feelings and things to say, but that's for later. Right now, we want to get right into this so that you all can have a satisfying end to this exciting adventure arc. Uh, but truly, from all of us uh, over here at Motherlands, thank you so much for being here tonight. As I said, I'm Okenyo, I'm DM Jazzy Hands. I'm going to be your storyteller this evening. Let's go ahead and go around and introduce our four phenomenal role players uh, as they let us know who they are and who they're going to be playing tonight for our finale. Uh, let's go ahead and start with with Michael tonight. Hello, hello folks. Uh, my name is Michael Sinclair II. I go by Michael Kritz. Um, I play Eli. Their pronouns are they, them. My pronouns are he, him. Um, and hello from Wyoming today. I am out here visiting some friends. We did the proper quarantine techniques, but uh, yeah, it's out, out here cold, but um, here and happy to see some warm company. So excited for today's game. Yeah, so am I. Uh, let's see, let's hop over to DJ next. Oh, hi, I'm DJ Knight. Uh, uh, I play Akimba, who's a Mycelian bio priest. Uh, both of our pronouns, he, him. Uh, I like to play video games. I like these amazing people that we're here with today. Thank you for showing your faces. You're awesome. And so are you, DJ. So you are you. you no, first. you. All right. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's pop over to Christina. Hi, lady. Hi. Hi. My name's Christina Ariel. That's not your name, but it's mine. It uh huh. It's your RDM, but yeah. Um, I play Captain Silent Nine One Nine, and today she's giving you Leia realness, and I'm very excited about it. And also, we didn't see those opening credits until just now. And I'm really upset because I'm gonna cry off my magnetic eyelash, and it's really emotional. Like we're already Ooh. super. Ooh. We're like it was not supposed to be the finale this fast, <laughs> and finally it's the finale, and it is. And now I'm like, I'm like super emotional, and I just want you guys to go on this ride with yeah. us, and I'm really excited to go to space with you guys, and like I don't know, like battle like giant octopi and stuff. So like people go boom, whatever, you know. I'm just, I'm just really happy to be in the room. Oh my God. Uh, I was also going to complain about the fact that I put 
a little bit of eye makeup on tonight. And of course that was a terrible idea, but uh, magnetic eyelashes, way bigger problem than a little bit of smeared eyeliner. So I'm gonna keep <laughs> quiet <laughs> and keep going around to our leader, our di creative director, the person who made this all possible, the person whose channel we take over every Sunday night, uh, the one who brought us aboard, the one who came up with the idea for all of this and the reason that we're here. Hi, Tanya, how you doing? You're gonna make me cry, you bastard. Um, <laughs> supposed to cry later. Um, yeah, well, we can, uh, but don't, don't you worry. I will do plenty to keep us from crying in the middle. So we'll do beginning and end. Crying. I will just hate you for the middle. <laughs> um, of course I did a whole full face of makeup and you've got me crying already. <laughs> yeah, um, well. <laughs> hi, I'm Tanya. I'm Invicta, your blade keeper, hi and all. Both Invicta's pronouns and mine are she, her. And uh, I am really regretting putting on a whole face of makeup right now. Overall. It's for good. It's happy tears, but still. It is. Choices were made by all of us, and clearly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, excellent. Those are the players for this evening. We do have some very specific thank yous, of course, as we do each week, uh, because there are a lot of folks that made it possible for us to be here with y'all for the last 12 weeks. First of all, we want to thank Die Hard Dice, an amazing partner uh, for Into the Motherlands. Thank you so much, everyone at Die Hard Dice, for supporting our endeavors into the Motherlands. Uh, as I'm sure most of you know, but maybe this is some of your first time, uh, we do have a Musalian Skies dice set, a, a Motherlands-specific dice set available at Die Hard Dice. They are beautiful blue, bright crystal blue dice. Uh, you can get them inked or uninked. And if you get them inked, they're beautiful gold uh, numbers on the dice. Uh, and of course they have all kinds of other stuff, great dice sets and all kinds of things over for you there. So check out everything that they have to offer and get you a set of Musalian Skies at dieharddice.com. Next up, we wanna thank Blue Microphones. Oh, you can't see mine, sorry. I have one too. Blue Microphones, also a sponsor of Into the Motherlands, uh, made sure to upgrade our audio rigs so that that we are crystal clear for all of you. Hopefully we are crystal clear for all of you. Uh, but if we're not, it's not because of our equipment. Uh, Blue Mics has all kinds of really great XLR mics, USB mics, uh, big, small for any occasion. So check out everything they have to offer at bluemic.com. Third, we could not be, why well, we could be here telling stories, but we wouldn't be rolling any dice if it weren't for the folks over at Cortex by Fandom. Our system is powered by Cortex and we are so grateful to all of the support we have got from those those folks. Their player's handbook or their core rulebook has been released. If you don't have your hands on it already, you certainly can go out and find you a copy. Are we giving away copies during the stream today? Yeah, four copies. Cortex Ooh. was very kind and gave us 10 codes, some of which have been given away in our Discord. All right, so we got four of these babies that we are giving away tonight. Uh, if you do win or if you do buy your own copy, you also, well, I'm not gonna show you my code, but you also get a digital version uh, along with your hard copy. Uh, so if you if you don't win tonight, uh, definitely go check out your own copy. Uh, since we are doing those giveaways, be sure to keep an eye on chat and do know that you must be following the channel and you must be present when the mods draw the names. So be sure to stay, it's our way of getting you to stay all the way to the end. Uh, you have to be present when your name is drawn uh, so that we can get in touch with you know where to send it. Uh, so anyway, thank you so much to the forks, fo forks, folks over at Cortex by Fandom uh, for powering our game system. Last but most certainly not least, thank you so much to Twitch for believing in this project, for, for allowing us to be here, for uh, helping hype us and support us and, and finance us and all of the things. Uh, Twitch has been an amazing supporter of Into the Motherlands and we are deeply grateful. So thank you all over there for that. For now, that's where I'll stop the major thank yous. Uh, I do, before we start playing tonight, before we get to the recap tonight, do want to start off tonight with a similar content warning to the one we have last week. Uh, as we have learned, the Hapalox, the uh, cephalopodic uh, creatures that uh, our four adventurers have had to deal with uh, during the course of this adventure are quite horrifying and we will only learn more and more horrors about them. Uh, I'm not going to be gratuitous, I'm not going to be over the top, but you all should be aware uh, that in my descriptions of some of the things the Hapalox might do, we might get a into a little light body horror. Uh, there may be some things about eyes tonight. I will give you all the heads up before we get to that, uh, but do know that that's coming. Uh, and of course we want you all to be here, but we want you to take care of yourselves first. So if you need to step away for a few minutes when we get to that part, which as I said, I'll do my best to give you a heads up, uh, we talk totally understand that. Uh, so that is my content warning for tonight. You'll get it again a little bit later when that becomes relevant. And now, the recap.
Yeah, Ooh. yeah, come on, come on. So we come back to the whole situation, and instead of just like, there's like, you know, the big half, the little octopi thing is coming up. Silas knocked out, and we have the lady who's on the ship, and she's hot the ran, and she's rude. So Silas knocks her out. And she keeps saying, we need to look at both sides of this. There's good people on both sides of this argument, which is why she got knocked out in the first place. And so turns out she decides to make a break for it when she does come to. And she goes and gets in one of our escape pods and was like, we come in peace. Going up to like, because, oh my gosh, we found out that it wasn't just one giant octopus. It was multiple octopi. And they were all coming for us. And so she decides that she's going to hop her little happy butt into one of the escape pods. She floats up. I come in peace. And they're like, no. And then they blow her up. There was some other stuff that happened too. But that was like the stuff that I was really excited about. I, I don't know about y'all. I, I, a round of applause for the most words and fewest noises of a Sila 919 recap that we've had all season. That was really lovely. It was really lovely. Uh, anyone else want to fill in any other gaps? Um, I'm just like, how do I, how do I word this? Cause, uh, cause Invicta was like ready to throw down yeah. over, over, uh, Sila being hurt. And it was just like, she's not even shedding a tear. She's not risking her nice silky fur getting damaged or marked up with any remorse over, the grand minister of agriculture getting herself blown up. She's like, that's one less escape pod. Oh, well. Oh, well. Uh, but she also tried to open that squid like can opener. <laughs> that is, that is, tr that is a good and accurate description. Uh, anybody else details to add? I do remember that Akimba beat the <laughs> out of one of those octopus and it felt great. He was real <laughs> mad about it. He was like real mad, but then, he punched shit out of that octopus, and he, he felt sure did. way better. <laughs> he sure oh, did. And it was fancy too. He said, "Who had what? systems failure? You? Oh, you muted again? But I bet I know what you that know, noise was." Little... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and they're like they shoot the weapons, so they were sitting in the seats, and wasn't it like, or was that before? Because that was two episodes ago. My bad. <laughs> that's, that's, it's okay. I remember that. <laughs> uh, I love it. And, and then for <gasps> I like, oh, uh, they they kind of set together or planned out a tactical retreat uh, by doing some evasive maneuvers and trying to do a tactical retreat back to uh, Hothra, the Hothra planet um, so that we can maybe get some reinforcements or some, uh, you know, some uh, bigger solutions to the threats that we have coming towards yeah. us. And, and uh, solutions you did. So as you fled from the, uh, the Hapalock ships, big and small that were in pursuit of you, uh, you returned to your return planet side on Hathare, uh, landed Bertrand's ship, the Wistful Wish, on the irrigation station on the planet, and the planetary defenses sort of took over from there, which was one of the things that actually the Grand Minister of Agriculture was worried about that it might be seen as a declaration of war. Uh, but she didn't really have an opportunity to do much about it since as uh, as Sila 919 has informed us, she got blowed up. Uh, so you all returned planet side, the planetary defenses activated and blew the smaller Hapalock ships out of the sky. Uh, the larger one uh, that you all sort of spotted at the last moment as you were returning to the planet is still out there, but it does not seem to be releasing any more of the smaller ships. It doesn't seem to be approaching the planet. It's definitely not within range of the planetary defenses yet. It's just sort of ominously hovering, uh, almost like a second tentacled moon in the sky above Hathare as you all look on. Well, that was our recap for this evening such as they are. Uh, you all have returned. You have managed to uh, uh, land safely on the irrigation station platform. Uh, and what are you all doing? You have 
You are down one escape pod, down one Grand Minister of Agriculture. You do have the corpse of a Hapalock on board with you. Uh, and, and in fact, you all can see uh, that as you land, when you go to open up the uh, cargo bay door in the back to, to debark the ship, you hear a sort of crunching, clattering, smashing sound. And you realize that the Hapalox, the small Hapalox ship was actually still attached to the cargo doors uh, of the Wistful Wish. You had managed to, uh, uh, Ber uh, Bertrand had managed to get some drones to seal up the hull breach, but it actually fused that Hapalock ship to the Wistful Wish. So you are in possession of a ship and a corpse. What are you doing? Before we start, anyone, Please. anyone getting those vibes from a certain uh, movie that is based off a July 4th holiday, because I'm getting major of those vibes. Oh, anyway. wow. You are 100% <laughs> right, Earth. and I 100% did not intend that, but you are absolutely right. Is it a legally <laughs> distinct film? Absolutely. I don't know. I just, this yeah. is uh, the, the, the 24 hour cycle of freedom is what this is called. <laughs> Perfect. Freedom is Coleman or Paxton. <laughs> That's it. Freedom oh comes to buck 05. Oh boy. Wow. I'm actually uh, thinking yeah. of all the hours I put into XCOM. Oh, yeah. Yep, yeah, that too. That too for sure. Can you just say corpse and I'm like, what armor do I get for dissecting this corpse? <laughs> I mean, look, we could, maybe that's a mechanic for Motherlands. I don't know. We're still working. Uh, uh, for this moment, though, uh, as you all, you know, you sort of get out and you or you open the cargo bay door, the ship sort of gets torn free of the back of the ship. The, the small ship gets torn free of the back of the Wistful Wish. Uh, and there is a crowd of irrigation station employees, all of these Hotharayans just sort of standing frozen where they are, I, some of them are staring at you, some of them are staring at the Hapalock ship, some of them are staring up in the sky at the great big one that is still up there. Some of them are watching the planetary defense cannons, but there is sort of an eerie silence on the irrigation station as everyone planet side just uh, is, is taken completely aback, is in, in total shock at what has just occurred. Um. I actually grab the corpse by the tentacles uh -huh. and, and start dragging it behind me. Like, look, we got to figure out what makes these things tick absolutely. and fast. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Anybody else? Yes. Was there, was there a parachute involved? Yeah. In carrying of the alien. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we're just recreating just the movie. Just between us. <laughs> Nah, nah, no. Oh my god, I almost said Celise. Does, does Invicta brain? get mad and punch the thing through the parachute? Y'all! <laughs> no, no, she doesn't. Okay. Um, no, but but she's like, she's mad and even yeah. though she never admit it, she's kind of scared because this is not, even with all her training, she's never seen anything like this. No, so. definitely not. She's like, what the hell? What's going on here? This is not okay. Um, so. A, a lot of the, there are a few Hothraeans that are closer to the Wistful Wish. And when you come out toting that thing, there are some frightened elephantine trumpeting that goes on. And a lot of them sort of, well, as much as an elephant person can scurry, they sort of scurry back away from you. Uh, there is there is not quite panic because it is it is truly that extended moment of shock of disbelief from most of the Hotharians that you see. What about the other three of you? What are you doing? Um, I I think what I'm going to do is either go to uh, Sila nine one nine or to Akimba. Um, because we know there's a giant ship out there and it's just holding still and steady. We know that the um, Listful Wish is not probably the best craft and it's been already like dinged up. Um, so I guess if I can talk to either Sadla 919 or Akimba. <clears throat> Captain Sadla 919. Yes, Captain Sadla 919, correction. Um, belay my last as they were. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Um, I guess I'll go up to Captain Silo 919. Um, 
Captain Silo 919, um, it seems that we might not have the firepower that we need on the list for wish. However, there's a bunch of engineers here and essentially that moon is a bunch of lasers, right? If possibly we can be a distraction, and this is just a plan, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know if the lasers are strong enough. I don't know um, if this will all work out, but we could perhaps be a distraction and a listful wish to get a whole bunch of engineers to um, the moon and they can all point their lasers towards the bigger craft. I think that's the only solution I can think here. It's perhaps something we should discuss with the rest of the crew. If you'll give me just a moment and she's going to disconnect because she was running some antivirus software mm -hmm. <laughs> and trying to get back to peak physical condition for an android. Um, I think we're going to need all of the firepower that we can get. And we're going to need to speak with the Hotharayans to see what help they can offer or if they'll offer help. As we saw, the last Hotharayan we had on board was not as helpful as one should be. <laughs> well, that's Yikes. a moot point now. She's a moot point now. Oh. Touche. <laughs> I like the echo. <laughs> that was nice. Whatever the, the Hawthorne equivalent of oh happened. Right. Like there's there's oh, there's Something like that just happened behind us. <laughs> yes, yeah, somewhere in the ship. It was the station master. He's still yeah. hiding in there. Uh, <laughs> oh, now see, hindsight's twenty twenty. The station master should have been just such the sassiest Hotharian you ever met. Um, so speaking of actually of the station master, as you all are discussing this plan with the moon, uh, the the uh, station master of the irrigation station finally comes off this ship and just looks around very quickly, looks up at the sky, spots the big one, uh, and runs over to uh, one of the big sort of central office buildings or central uh, control buildings uh, in in the on the irrigation station and moments later you hear a a sort of siren start to go off and it is loud and you can hear from your position from your vantage up on top of this because remember you're on the irrigation station which is way elevated above the three lakes of Hathare. Uh so you can tell that this signal is being sent out from multiple points uh, around the surrounding areas and possibly all over the planet, uh, and a a very loud Hatharayan voice begins to ring out. This is not a test. All all citizens of Hatharay, report to your stations for I. The word is missing in my brain. Hold on, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Oh, yes, of course. Uh, report to uh, your, your shelter stations. This is not a test. All Hatharayan citizens report to shelter stations. And you can see everyone on the station, and even you can see the little tiny ants of Hatharayans on the surface below you all just scatter. Hmm. Um, how far have I gotten with my ill-gotten squid? <laughs> I mean, I think you've gotten off the ship. I don't know where you were headed after that, but you're at least off the ship and, and well towards uh, whatever your, your, your uh, goal I, was. I was hoping for like a science state, like a science area, like on a station wherever we landed. And if there's not one nearby, I'm just going to go back on the ship and try to find like a med bay, a science station, something. Yeah, so, uh, and and Bertrand sort of, uh, see, you know, when you went back in, uh, I think Bertrand was still sort of shutting down the engines and and maybe ran into you and knows what you're doing. And so he can tell you, ah, well, uh, Invicta, oh, you're right. Uh, we should study these. Uh, there isn't, uh, something tells me that the uh, scientists of the 
uh, irrigation station probably won't have the tools, but uh, we can uh, place the corpse in the medical bay of the Wistful Wish for now, and I will make inquiries as to whether perhaps on the surface uh, there are facilities we can use. Mm, I was hoping to do something now and see what weaknesses these things have. Oh, you are welcome to uh, whatever you need that I have available on board, of course. It is a, uh, if somewhat antiquated, a still uh, fully equipped medical bay. Hmm. Are there knives and laser weapons? Uh... I, I don't know that I would call the laser scalpel there a, a weapon, but I suppose under the right circumstances, uh, and something tells me if anyone could do it, it would be you. Uh, do I overhear this conversation at all? Richard is not a quiet man, so Oh, yes. okay. <laughs> sure. Um, um, in Victor, perhaps I might be of assistance. I haven't been able to quite utilize... Um, my, my talents as as I normally can. Maybe this is a place where I can contribute these talents. Hmm. Sure, if you if you want to help me do a quick field, I Hot guess. Up, see. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say something entirely wrong, and I'm like, no, I this is not calamari. I cannot eat this thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can do what you want, but. I mean, I know I'm a cat and all, but <laughs> this this has been like this this body has been dead for a while. I don't want mm. necrotic damage. Mm. I mean, mm -hmm. it, has it been like a day though? Like I feel like <laughs> if we wanted to cook it. <laughs> I mean, so and if you got some good cheese on the ship. Since when does the Kemba not have good cheese? After Look, his first bout with cheese, he has been stocking cheese nonstop. Like he he Ooh. always has a brick nearby. Fondue, fondue after oh. the fight. Like slice up with the tentacles and then yeah. just like nicely saute it, dip it in some of the fondue. Let's do it. All right, I, we're gonna figure this out and then we have dinner <laughs> later. Yeah, yeah. You this is how they that, die, let's eat it. Yeah. <laughs> you know that I am as excited as the next person for a good dinner party, but I think perhaps we should begin the autopsy. An okay. autopsy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, I stole that from the chat. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll accompany Invicta to whatever, um, you know, it, whether they take us to some sort of ward or some morgue or some uh, uh, laboratory, I, I will go to that Hothrian facility. Uh, yeah, I, so right. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Invicta. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just saying, I'm just gonna let let Bartran lead us to the uh, to the med bay and go from yeah, there. Yeah, so he takes you sort of to a four a far corner of the ship, and and you go in there, and it's uh, to y'all's eyes, it is definitely a little antiquated, uh, but but it does have you know everything you would need for uh, for you know cold storage and uh, basic treatment. Uh, you all didn't really need it in the past or have time to use it in the past, but basic treatment is there, and you know there is there are the tools that you would need for for at least a, a cursory autopsy uh, for sure. As a bio priest and some pretty proficient with most things. Would I be able to, would Sila like have any insight into this? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I think actually it's funny. I didn't really think about this until this moment, but I actually think all four of you have uh, something about you that would lend to your being able to help out with this autopsy. The two bio priests, I mean, obviously your familiarity with sort of the codes of life, obviously the light bringer with the, with the sort of energy manipulation and the ability to uh, sort of understand living beings on a very different level than the bio priests and Invicta just smart as hell, so. All right. All right. Well, we ain't got all day, so y'all coming? Let's go. Excellent. <laughs> Uh, great. The uh, the surface and the planet like continues to to go under planetary lockdown. Uh, Bertrand sort of says, "I don't particularly uh, like the sight of uh, 
uh, whatever is going to come out of that. So I'm I'm going to go check on the station master if it's all the same to to you. Uh, and sort of shakily uh, exits the wistful wish <laughs> as you all as you all head into the med bay. Uh, all right. So let's see. What do we want to do here? Who is going to, we're gonna do, oh, we should move over to the roll table because we're gonna do some tests just to do this autopsy. Uh, oh so let's see, let's do that move first. How's that? Yeah. Sure. I mean, I'm we like, have too much of a choice. <laughs> I didn't really give any sort of heads up to our producer about no. this, so surprise, here we go. Okay, hi everybody. Great. Oh, look, we've got look. FTL speeds have surpassed the wormhole technology. There I we love go. it. Uh, all right. So uh, there are a few things that each of you can do. Right. One, maybe two of you can actually actively be performing this autopsy. Right, doing the actual cutting and all of that. Yeah, great. I, that's sort of what I was thinking. Uh, you can also. Uh, you all can decide what you want to do if you're not actively participating in the, the cutting, ew. Uh, if it's gonna be, you know, just observing to try and, and notice details, if they're, I don't know, you all tell me, you're the players, you're creative, you tell me what you want to do. So I get that Eli wants to definitely be in on the actual physical autopsy, yeah? Correct, yeah, because I think Lightbringers, uh, I don't, I only saw the sheet once, but I believe okay. Lightbringers have like a, a specialized scalpel technique, whether it's enemy or Mm -hmm. or someone who's uh, friendly uh, to be able to manipulate energies with like a scalpel-like device. So I feel like Eli would probably be pretty good at the techniques of essentially not ruining anything for inspection. Great, I love that. Yeah, absolutely. How about the rest of you? Um, well, if Eli is gonna do the actual autopsy, I will, I will kind of be nearby to either hand tools Great. Or uh, kind of make a prognosis based on what Eli uncovers. <laughs> also, just mm -hmm. helping move move large things because you know you know you gotta you gotta manipulate that. It's a big boy. Things moving. You gotta you gotta yeah, absolutely. Stuff. You got ten feet of tentacle. Uh, Sila nine one nine and Akemba. All right. Well, Akemba's gonna need a minute, but Sila. <laughs> Miss. Um, Sila is very intrigued uh -huh. by this entire situation and is very, like, pretty much if Eli is there, then Sila is directly across and pretty much a mirror image with her own scalpel. It's oh, okay. Not one, it's not a piece of her hair, though, because that's gross. Oh, because that, that's like, has, gross. She has an actual physical scalpel, and she's just okay. there with Eli ready to go. I love it. I love it. Okay, and Akemba? Akemba's with Eli, and... Uh, Invicta, ready to help where possible with uh, octopsy. All right, octopsy. We, I can't stand y'all. Uh, no, well, hey. All right, so let's start. <laughs> let's start with uh, Eli and ooh, and Captain Silo nine one nine, and you all are going now. This is a you. Put your, put your dice pools together however you want, but these are gonna be tests, not contests, so I'll roll first, for you to you know, properly dissect the creature without sort of ruining it, without destroying evidence, without whatever. Uh, and uh, so that's where we're gonna start tonight. So y'all start putting your dice pools together. I'm gonna do the same. Oh, could everybody, if you haven't already, players, uh, just make sure that you have updated the stresses on your character sheets, because uh, I'm gonna use them against you if I can. I don't remember, and they didn't save. Uh, guess as best you can if you if you've got something, and I, I'm not gonna worry too much about it. Um, I'm sure I had angry stress. <laughs> I think mine was a D6 that last. So is it still D6, or did it go down? It's a D6 now, uh, but we'll probably move it after this. Eli, you're gonna wanna include that D4 in your dice pool, and then you'll be able to clear that insecure stress that you've got. Is it a choice to do it, or I have to always add it to some role when- It when is, there's... it's my choice. <laughs> okay, easy. Um, but you um, know what, insecure, I'm actually not gonna, we can use that elsewhere. So actually don't use, don't you don't okay. need to put it in for this one. Yeah, uh, and Sila, you were clear, right? Yes, I had corrupted, yeah. but I think I was good after. And we and we cleared it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. So uh, let me actually let's do this instead. All right. So here comes my roll. 
for Eli is an 11, not bad. Eli, tell us about your pool and then roll it up. Yeah, absolutely. So pool I have is Lightbringer. Obviously that's the techniques that the Lightbringer knows uh, whether to use uh, precise um, scalpel-like techniques or uh, mm -hmm. anything of the sort uh, against friend or foe to either help build or uh, destroy in a sense. Absolutely. Uh, we have focus because uh, trying to make sure that uh, we don't nick anything that uh, would need further inspection or would ruin our inspection of anything else. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we want to keep fluids where they are, not move anything as much as we need to. Mm -hmm. And then um, balance, because I'm working in tandem with Captain Sila 919. So making sure that I know that it, uh, Sila, Captain Sila 919 mentioned that they're going to mirror me, but I also have to make sure that I can uh, in tandem mirror uh, Captain Sila 919. So that's the pool that I went with. You got it. Roll that up, and then I will come to Sila for her mirror dice pool in a moment. Okay. All right. All right. A 14 and a D. Let me write this down this time. 14 and a D8 effect. All right. Uh... And this is Eli. All right. Uh, I will tell you how that goes in a moment, but let's go on over to Captain Sila 919, who's on the other side of the creature. Tell us about your dice pool, Captain Sila 919. So I'm going to be using my Bio Priest. Absolutely. And I will also, I would like to use Untrained because it's not something I've done before, but I've also <laughs> it's read, not? I've read a lot about it. So sure. if you want to get technical, I know everything. I just haven't done everything. Totally, totally. All right, I like that. Anything else? Got a, a value that you want to include or anything else? I would also like to use balance to work in conjunction with Eli. I think that's great. I think that's great. All right, rolling it up. Number to beat this time is a five and I rolled a, an opportunity. So Sila doesn't have any stress. Anybody want to buy that off of me? Maybe me if everyone else is, well, uh, Invicta, you had angry, right? Yeah, From... you've got a D6 yeah. angry if you want to buy yeah, let's, that down. Let's, let's get that to, I'll pass on that then. Okay. Uh, yeah, unless Akemba wants it. I mean, we both got D6s of Angry, so. But you probably need it more than I do. <laughs> the way he rolls? <laughs> wow! I was <laughs> like, damn! All the shit is jumping out. <laughs> Look, See? 12 episodes, we had one botch, and he can't hear me making fun of him, but whose was it? And this, he can this... watch the VOD later. Gloves are off today, okay? I mean, <laughs> wow. I mean, all right. So you step that down to a D4 uh, for you, you and you'll be good. Mm -hmm. So Sila, roll that up. You just got to beat a five, my lady. Ooh, look at you, a 10 and another D8. Okay. There you go. All right, so the two of you are able to sort of perfectly in tandem uh, begin to open this creature up. Uh, and and you start, you know, the obvious place is sort of at the, at the top of the head where, well, <laughs> top of the elongated squid body thing. Um, and you, <laughs> you open it up and this is probably a good time to reiterate the slightly body horror-ish content warning. Uh, so take care of yourselves. I'm not gonna get too, un too gratuitously graphic, but it's gonna be gross. Uh, you open up the, the head of this thing. And the first thing that happens is that sort of clear viscous liquid body fluid just comes pouring out. Uh, and once that's, and you just splashing on the floor of the med bay. Once that is out though, you have a pretty clear picture of the inside of the top part of this creature. And it is wild. It seems to, um, it is a tangle of, of what look like maybe nerves and all kinds of, of uh, viscera and all kinds of things in there. But at first glance, it is unlike anything that the two of you have seen. So it's difficult to sort of make out what it is you're seeing, but you've done a really clean job of opening it up. 
Invicta and Akemba, you two are sort of there waiting, ready to uh, observe and see, you know, from your bird's eye perspective, what you can learn about this thing. So let's get the two of you to, uh, we're gonna put together some dice rolls, some pools to see what you know about this thing. And I'm gonna use the effect dice from uh, Sila and Eli uh, and give you all some assets. So each of you can have a D8 asset because they both had D8 effect dice. Each of you can have a D8 asset in addition to whatever else you want to put in your dice pools. How's that? Appreciate it. Can, can my asset be basically something that would be in the medical bay, like mm-hmm. kind of like almost like Sila's um, eye piece? Oh, sure. Where I could look into the body more like almost like an x ray goggle or something. Yeah, I think there's sort of a, you know, just a basic sort of diagnostic x-ray scanner, uh, sort of a, you know, if we're thinking in modern earth words, right, like sort of a combination uh, x-ray, MRI, CT scan, all the things, right, in one sort of view screen. I love that, yeah. Uh, Kemba, any idea what you might want to? As far as dice or assets, because I feel like that's, oh, uh, assets, you, let's... that one, because that's great. Like, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You can absolutely. That's fine with me. And let's go ahead and put. Uh, well, whichever one of you wants to put a dice pool together first. I already got mine. All right, tell oh, me about it then. Go for Where it. You go. All right, tell me about it. Bio priest, because it's a biological life form. So obviously, that's going to factor into things. Uh, absolutely. Fix. Uh, it's not like he's not necessarily going to fix anything, but the knowledge you have to have to fix something mm. is the knowledge of how it works. So Absolutely. he's trying to figure out how it works and using how his understanding of biological life forms and, and basically all the planets he's been to thus far to try to apply some of that to this. Absolutely. Knowledge. And he's knowledge. Sure. All about the life. So let's, let's do the things. And do I still get to use that D8 or is it just like, oh, abs- asset yeah, point? no, you sure do. Man, I am. Mm. The dice are being kind to y'all tonight. That is an eight. All you got to beat is an eight. <laughs> okay, you beat it a D eight. You all th- this standard D eight effect die. I love it. It makes it easy for me. You know, it'd be a good uh, asset at this point. A bucket. We that? just need a bucket to put a things in. Bucket. If you want to be solid yeah. on that, there I'm you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, give me I, the bucket. I will say. Uh, okay, so you also rolled a hitch, Ikemba. So here's what happens. So you uh, you move over to uh, to also, you know, take the the other side of the diagnostic scanner. Uh, And as you are there, uh, you know, the two that are performing the actual autopsy, uh, they sort of hit a little sack of something. uh, And there is a sort of squirt of that of that fluid uh, that squirts out and hits you, uh, Ikemba, square in the face. And it's not very much, and you're able to wipe it away pretty quickly, uh, but it does get in you a little bit and you start to feel a little, just for a moment, a little off balance. So I'm gonna buy that uh, hitch. Uh, So take a plot point, but you're also gonna take a D6 of corrupted stress. Hmm, yay. Uh, all right, before uh, before I tell you what you find, let's do Invicta's uh, dice pool and roll, and then we'll uh, we'll we'll update you on what you got. So, Invicta, tell me about your pool. So I took high and all because, well, knowledge of things. Totally. Um, this is not my forte, despite my my skills and my training. Uh-huh. I sure. have like I'm basically like the combat medic where I can keep you maybe sorta. From losing a lot of blood and maybe sort of dying if it's not too bad but don't call me if somebody loses a leg um so it's like untrained uh, okay duty. love that duty because well what else are we gonna do this we ain't got much of a choice yeah and uh i took my my asset of the kind of x-ray goggle all right let's roll up this up on my end see what we got there is a seven and an opportunity who wants to buy this one uh, Invicta, would you like to buy this one since Akemba bought the last one? Oh, yes. All right. So step that angry down to a D4 and then roll up your pool. Seven is the number to beat. I am a little relieved that I'm rolling mediocrely because I didn't want y'all to die during an autopsy. <laughs> I, you know what? That sounds I, promising. That's too close to that one film that we haven't mentioned also. <laughs> that's true. It's true. 
All right, Kim. I mean, Invicta. Let's see it. Ooh, a twelve and a and a D eight. Look, I love it. Just everybody. Oh my D8s. god. Um, I'm just right. like, is B Dave texting you? No. That sounds we did like that something we started. Oh. Okay. Uh, okay. So, the two of you uh, take your uh, scanners and you just sort of scan the system and or scan the creature uh, now that it's open and you learn a couple of things. Uh, first is that there doesn't appear to be a centralized, uh, like, we'll call it like a brain, right? It seems like there isn't really a nervous center. Uh, so all of these nerves and things, fibers that Ikemba and, uh, sorry, that Eli and Captain Silent 919 have found seem to be sort of a, a decentralized nervous system. Uh, they are, uh, you can see that, and you sort of already knew this, but the sides of them uh, have all of these little, um, bioluminescent sort of glands uh, that can, and you can see them now for what they are. And there are dozens, maybe hundreds of these things running up and down the sides of this creature. And that's where all of those lights that you saw came from. You both can see how those, uh, those glands are connected to the nervous system. And it becomes more and more clear that that is their primary form of communication because it is so deeply linked with so much of the nervous system of this creature. As you all continue sort of scanning the creature further down, uh, you eventually get to sort of the bottom of the creature and there's you know the horrible little beak thing and all the tentacles start. But you notice uh, Sila and and Eli have sort of bisected this thing and opened it up, and there is a pretty large uh, organ of some sort down towards the bottom of this thing's body. And the two of you get down there at about the same time, excuse me, and you see that inside of this organ are all of these little round things right it looks almost like a like a gumball machine right like a the the dome of a gumball machine it's got dozens and dozens of these little no. nope. spheres nope 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 and mm -hmm. before the two of you can stop Eli and Sila they cut through the membrane of this organ and out burst now y'all here it comes so take care of yourselves mm -hmm outburst these tiny little, they are like eyes with a set of teeth and one little leg, not really a leg, but like little thing coming out of the bottom. They burst out, fall to the ground. There are dozens of them and they begin to scurry all over the place, crawling up each of <laughs> you, up trying ah. to get up nope. to your no. heads. No, no, so, am, no, yeah. <laughs> no. I, I am, no. I'm, I'm doing monk stuff. I am stomping, kicking, like, no. it's basically hacky sack day up in that. And, and I'm, mm -mm. I'm going to town. So no. I am, I am going to, I am going to refrain from describing it in too much more detail, but I will that say that enough. these, mm -hmm, <laughs> that this mob of creatures is now going to initiate contests with the four of you. Oh no, uh uh, no. I have Do we have enough fire screen. for this? I don't I think don't there's, there's enough, enough fire. fire in the galaxy for this, but we'll see. Uh, can, oh, well, if I open my mouth, it'll crawl my mouth on it. Well, that's entirely up to you. Uh, so there is a swarm, a mob, a whatever you want to call it, of these creatures. And as I said, they have come, uh, there are dozens of them. Uh, and many of them have started uh, coming up to each of you. So, you know what? I lied. Just question. Yeah, please. Hypothetically. Mm -hmm. What if there were an aerosol type can on the stand with all of the medical utensils. I mean, I definitely think an aerosol can. Interesting. Uh, uh, everybody I, knows that Musalia and Hathare are completely stocked with aerosol cans and that that's specifically what they use. How's, how's this? How about this? And you tell me if this will serve your purposes. Uh, 
And if it doesn't, then you can spend a plot point to create an asset of an aerosol can if you want. But there would definitely be some oxygen tanks in the med bay, I think. That sounds more flammable than I'm talking about. Oh. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's up to I'm you. Like an if oxygen you... with like a thing with like a spray hose on the end of it, but like I mean, it would have like a like a mask at the end of it, but you could sort of aim that, I, I guess. <laughs> oh, it would there be a medical blowtorch and oxygen? We don't need it. I got one in my hair. <laughs> but I don't, want your, I don't want your hair to burn off when we explode the oxygen. I have protocols I mean... in place for that. Oh my God. If any of the rest of you want, right. If any of the rest of you want access to fire, there should be at least like a cauterizing iron or something in the med bay, right? So yeah, you can you can definitely get heat, y'all. I, uh, I am yeah, go just, ahead, I like. I'm just trying to be like a, a sophomore in college and play the best hacky sack life I can right now with all these things. <laughs> Amazing. All right. Uh, so I do think that all of you are going to respond aggressively to these is what I'm hearing. Uh, and for reasons, I'm going to let you all initiate the contests if you would like against this swarm of eyes with teeth. I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, eye teeth with one leg. It's a little <laughs> filament, but yeah. Uh, so Those who wants to start? Like I mean, I don't either. Y'all know who to blame. Y'all know who to blame. Dave. Hello. Uh, he doesn't even get the B right now. Dave. <laughs> All right. Who would like to do the first uh, the first roll up? I'll do it. I'll... Oh. oh, you wanted to do it. Captain the Silent 919 is offended. Go for it. Come on. Come I on. I heard Kevin. the. Mm, All right. Give like, me. No, I'm good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I forgot my mic wasn't muted and I was pouting. All right, so I'm gonna take. <laughs> I want to take my little oxygen with the little, <laughs> hopefully nozzle at the end of it. I'm going to light two braids from each side, and I'm gonna spray it out. And I'm gonna make little blow torches from you know, like when you were younger, you take hairspray and like mm -hmm. make up a blower. I mean, no, I never did that. Yeah, I mean, who plays with fire? <laughs> but yeah, like, I want to do that, but in two different directions, like, all over it within reason. And mm -hmm. so that's braids. Yes, definitely braids. Where are you? There you I go. I have a value of I don't do gross stuff. Um, <laughs> so let's see. I'm going to do weaponized braids because I need mm -hmm. it for the fire. I'm going to do do it right or get out of my way because these are gross. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I want to use notice to make sure that I get as many of them in a go. Oh, I like that. Okay, great, great. You are initiating the contest, so you get to roll it up first, and then I will roll against you. Ooh, it's a good one. It's a good one. All right, so no, 15 is the number... 15 is the number to beat with a D6 uh, effect die, unless you want to switch some of the, any of that out to get a bigger effect die. It's up to you. Obviously your total would be lower, but you'd have a bigger effect. One more time. So you can switch the, so right now you're adding your D8 and your D10, right? The eight and the seven together to get that total that I have to beat. And your leftover die is the D6, which is your effect die. Remember on effect dice, the only thing that matters is the size, not the number. So if you wanted to have a bigger effect, you could swap out the dice and put the three in your total. So your total would reduce, but you have a bigger die type for your effect. So if you win the contest, the effect will be larger. It's a, it's a, you know, total judgment call for you. It's just, how do you want to gamble this? Mm. Sure, why not? This is the finale. All right. And remember, if they beat your number, that just means that you get another chance, right? Because this is a contest, so we go back and forth. So you're gonna move that three in there. Which one do you wanna move out to the effect die? Your D8-8 eight, eight, or your D10-7? tell you the better choice I, is the d10 7. <laughs> if if you want to change it out at all right 
I feel like you're trying to trap me, so I'm gonna go back. I am to not where trying I was. to do anything. I'm trying to introduce a mechanic that we have not used much. You don't have to do anything. Is that what you want to land on? Yeah. All right. All right. So we have an 11 is the number to beat with a nice big juicy D10 effect die rolling it up on my end. <laughs> okay. For what it's worth, the 16 would have beat the 15 too. So it's not that bad. Uh, so I got a 16 with a D8 effect die. Would you like to give in, which will earn you a plot point, but you will lose the contest? Or would you like to press your luck and roll again and try and beat a 16? I'd like to press my luck and roll again because Absolutely. I'm not giving in to these disgusting usual shorts. All right, same dice pool, unless you want to spend a, a plot point to do something to add to it. Okay, so it was the eight, 10, and the, uh, the braids. Okay, so you do not succeed uh, at, at uh, the contest. So here's what happens. Uh, you take those things and you spray and you absolutely, you know, get some, you get a couple of them, right? Because it's hard to miss them entirely. There are a lot of them. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, a couple of them get past the fire and begin to climb up mm -hmm. and onto your head. Uh, and you can feel that that little tentacle that's coming out of them is sort of as it climbs up you is injecting little things into your circuitry. Now your effect die was a D10, which is bigger than mine. So I'm gonna step down my effect die to a D6 and give you a D6 of corrupted stress, which is not that bad. <laughs> I've given you a D12 in one go before, so it could have been way worse. Uh, but the, the, you now have some of these things crawling up you and injecting something. Who's next? Good. All right, Akemba, you were ready to go before uh, Captain Silas, so go for it. Yeah, because, no, sir, I don't like it. Also, good dog. Um, bio priest, because reasons. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Fix, because he doesn't get how they work, and he wants to fix them so they're not climbing on him anymore. Like, that's an easy connection, and he's going to use his knowledge because he's he understands, like, he learned a bit from the biopsy or the octopsy, but he's like trying to like, yeah, I know. I, I took it from chat too. Uh, he's trying to get to the next level of understanding and also wants to like not kill them per se, but definitely close to kill them. Like not fully kill them, but definitely sure. he doesn't want them on him. <laughs> and yep. if it takes for him to kill them to not be on him, He's already corrupted a little bit. He doesn't want to be any more corrupted. So absolutely. He feels that's all right. Good. That all looks good. I am gonna say your D no, I'm gonna use your D6 corrupted in my pool, so you're good. Damn it. Um all right, I'm gonna roll it. All right, roll it up. You get to start. You are initiating this contest. Roll it up. I thought they got to initiate the contest. You uh, look, I look. Know. Tycho. Look at that. That's I'm, I'm all not right. complaining because I like rolls. I like the rolls. D12. That is a pretty, pretty roll, my friend. All right. Uh, well, for what it's worth, they're going to try and roll it up. Let's you see roasted, how it goes. You roasted my rolls last time, so I don't get to be happy about now, my rolls see, until... Until I result. roll two, two opportunities for y'all in mine and fail the contest. There you go. There you go. All right. So uh, I have two opportunities uh, one person can buy both of them to step down a stress two steps, or two of you can buy uh, one of them each to step down your stress once. Anybody need or want? I figure somebody wants one of those. Not me. I'm probably the lowest right now, so. Yeah. Uh, Captain Silo 919, do you want to step down your corrupted? Okay. So spend a plot point and step it down to a D4. And then there's one left. Does anyone else want that one? No, because I'm I'm pretty angry. Yep, that's fair. Yeah, 
I too am angry, but I also would like to be less corrupted. So I'm going to yep. take one of those. And step leave. it down. I use a plot point for that. Yes. Uh huh. You do, and then plot you step point. that down to Done. a D4 as well. Done. I can deal with D4s way more All than right. D6s. Yeah, for sure. All right. So Ikemba, tell us what this looks like when you uh, take out a good a good portion of these creatures that are running around uh, the the med bay. He kind of like pauses, feels where they are on him, and he just kind of like points his hands at himself. Mm. And just like closes his eyes and just like kind of moves his hands until he can feel their specific energy. Mm -hmm. And then once he feels their energy, he just kind of like plays around with his fingers for a second, just like toying with their state. And he, once he sees it and once he figures out the move to make, he just clenches his fists. Mm -hmm. And in unison, all the ones that he was taking out, they don't fully like squish because <laughs> the last thing he wants is to squish them. But they do yeah, clean that up. Mm. Exactly. Like do they do like it's visual that they could they they feel a pressure coming from the outside of them. But that's also him figuring out more about how their uh, biology works mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and taking advantage of that and just like kind of right. like ending. Yeah, ending a good a good quarter yeah. of them probably. Yeah, and like I love that. And now he's curious. Like he he wants to explain to the team the specifics of their makeup that could be useful when it comes to helping to destroy them. Yeah, like, absolutely. That's, that's kind of like your territory. He didn't want to like step on toes. Oh no, you good, you good. Uh, we'll get you some of that. I think in this moment, we're going to uh, put the pause button on that part of it. Uh, but yes, you definitely do uh, discover a few things about it and about a quarter of them. Like I said, you're able to sort of snuff out. Who's next? I'll, I'll go if that's all right. Uh, okay. Um, okay, so I have my dice full ready. Lightbringer, because I'm trying to use my hand-to-hand -hand combat um, fight because I am fighting these things mm -hmm. and power because I'm trying to be like Megan Rapinoe and just clear these things out of this field. So yes, a hundred percent. I am going to uh, have you at toss in that D4 for insecure okay. uh, because, and, and here's our narrative reason is that I think, uh, I think you're, uh, you know, you'd gotten over most of it, but then was it your fault that you opened up this, this organ at the bottom that all of this happened. So we're gonna to toss that D4 in all right. uh, for you. Initiate away. And I will say uh, to, to what DJ said earlier, for contests, it's actually better if you get to initiate because that means your first roll can't fail, right? It sets the difficulty, but there's no way to fail on a first roll of a contest back and forth. All right, I'm rolling Gift. and chan channeling I lies, you know, their their energy of Megan Rapinoe inside. So hopefully yes, this works out. I love that. Oh. Okay. All right. So we got a six and we got a hitch. So I'm gonna say, uh, tell me again, like what it is. Describe sort of what you're attempting to go for here. Yeah. So there's one like nibbling the back of my heel. I'm gonna do one of those like heel kick ups from behind <laughs> and then Great. try and like kick a uh, line. Right. Uh, right. 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 I kick that up and then there's another on my knee. I kick that up to the same level and in one of my hand, I flick that up so I can line three of them up and then just kind of- I love it. Air kick them all away with one hit. I love it. I think you get the first two. The third one though, you misjudge the distance and sort of bash your hand on the instrument table. So sure. I'm, gonna buy the, I'm gonna buy that hitch from you. So take a plot point and a D6 of injured stress. Okay. Uh, and then I'm gonna roll up my pool and see how we go. I'll do that in a sec so the pool's still up. Yeah, uh, that's fine. Uh, okay, so I got a 12. Uh, yeah. So I beat your total. Do you want to press it and keep going? Or do you want to give in here uh, and take a plot point? I will give in. Uh, okay. And it gets and stepped then... down. Okay, so uh, similar to what happened to Sila, uh, happens to you. So we are also going to give you a D6 of Corrupted. Uh, and I'm there. We all know what happened to Sila. We don't need to talk about it again. Uh, but so take a D6 of Corrupted, and you can take an extra plot point for giving in on that contest. Uh, and that leaves us with Invicta. 
Invicta is actually paralyzed with fear. Okay. She saw this and it just made her think of terrible, terrible things that have happened to her. Sure. And it's one of her fears. She yeah. is terrified. And you know, like when you walk into like a spider web or something, like how you just keep slapping yourself? Yes. Because you feel like even wow. if you probably got whatever's on you off and she's furry. So all she can think of is these things are going to attack me. And she saw what it did to Scylla and mm -hmm. she is just freaking out. Yeah. Uh, I think in her freak out, I'm going to say, since you are not focused specifically on uh, engaging these things, I will say that you, Invicta, notice to your further horror that some of these things are escaping the med bay. Um, I, I'm freaked out, and I just go, eh, 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 there, there. <laughs> eh. <laughs> basically yeah, yeah like, absolutely like hardened warrior hits phobia and freezes yeah yeah totally totally i love that um this is something that i haven't done it yet because i forgot about it until last week um but another way that you all can earn plot points is similar to if you're familiar with dungeons and dragons fifth edition similar to the inspiration system so invicta i'm gonna go ahead and give you a plot point uh because you are absolutely playing your character and absolutely not you know uh forcing some twisted narrative to like you know, do what is maybe mechanically advantageous uh, since you are playing your character well uh, and truthfully. Go ahead and take a plot point for that. It's also called playing myself rather truthfully. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> Absolutely just like, fair enough. Oh, Dave, I'm giving you such a phone call later. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, so for the moment, what I am going to say is that Invicta has, uh, after the uh, has sort of backed up and found a corner of the med bay that is currently clear of these things, and so none of them are on her at the moment. Um, she has pointed out to the rest of you that some of them are escaping the med bay. What are we doing next? I'm chasing them. Yes. The ones that are escaping the med bay. Uh, okay, you two are going after those. Uh, Captain Silent 919, what are you doing? So I'm just in a like windshield wiper manner. I'm using just different tendrils to knock these things off me and try to make my way out of the door away from. Oh, I don't like this. It feels like my skin is crawling. It's so oh, gross. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. I don't like. It. Oh no, not like that. <laughs> but I mean, like, ugh, it's one of yeah, those no, things I get where you. you just can't. I can't unfeel it, and it's just terrible. So I think Sila is not freaking out as I would, but she is very annoyed and angrily windshield wipering these spider yep. who's your bad teeth. Yep. What are teeth, my doodles? Ooh. Let's start with uh, Sila's contest since she's staying on the ship, and then we will follow uh, Eli and Akemba off the ship and see what, what happens there. So Sila, uh, here we go again. Uh, you can switch up your pool if you want this time since we are starting we are starting a new uh, a new contest. Ooh, okay. So. I would like to use knowledge. Okay, like tell me more. If I have anything in previously downloaded systems to deal with infestations. Sure. Oh, that's good. Yeah, just sort of infestations in general are a way. Yeah, I love that. Great. Yeah, if there's infestations possibly in, like we're still in the Whisper Witch, so I've got the ship's manifest. If there's mm -hmm. anything that might be there, I want to know it. So I'm going to use knowledge for that. Great. I am going to use, obviously, I'm still using my braids as a defense to get out. Mm -hmm. And I would like to use. Yeah. Ooh, fix. Okay, tell me more. No, no. No? <laughs> I'd like to use Monster Gene because I would like to believe that in our culture, like this is something, like at some point, 
in huh. this history, someone had to deal with this. So this would probably be <laughs> in my in my logs as well. Maybe not this exact scenario. No, but as, but yeah, no, I get what you again with the like swarm but, infestation. Yeah. And I don't yeah, know, absolutely. I doubt like I'm not shorting or anything from the no, whatever no. they just put into my Good. Yeah. Thank you for not being uh, that grimy, you and Dave. No, no, it's not that bad. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think Monsagani is great. And if you want to also do fix, because Monsagani is a full distinction and fix is a skill. So you can use both of those if you'd like. All right. Uh, so what, yeah, so as you, oh, I know what we'll do. Yes, great. Okay, so 14 is excellent. You do have one hitch. I'm going to buy it off of you. I'm going to give you a plot point, And I'm going to say that, uh, that actually you are processing uh, from all of these different sources so quickly. So from the, the ship's, you know, data banks, from the Monsagene sort of uh, uh, historical data, ba data banks, all of that, all at the same time, that your processors are just going, going, going. I'm going to buy that hitch and give you a D6 of exhausted stress is what we're going to do here. And then 14 is the number to beat. A good total. I'm going to roll mine up and see where we land. Ooh, I got a 16. You want to press your luck or you want to give in and earn a plot point? I'm going to press my luck. Okay. Same pool. 16 is the number to beat. Oh, I don't know why I wrote that down. You're pressing your luck. I don't need to know that. No, no, I wasn't ready to do that roll. That doesn't count. Mom, oh, no, it, does, it absolutely doesn't count. Yeah, no, no, no. That's only, there's only two dice on there. You're good. What was the other one? Was it knowledge? It was knowledge and then your braids. Knowledge fix, once again, a braids. Mm -hmm. 16 is the number to beat. Okay. Uh, going to, you're just, your things are getting dire. Uh, and so you try and even pick up your processing further. I'll buy that hitch from you. So another plot point to you, step that exhausted stress up to a D8. And then I am going to step your, so uh, since we won, uh, that just continues to happen. I'm going to step up your corrupted stress, D8, D8. Oh, it just steps up to a D8. Oh, wait, 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 sorry. Your corrupted stress, was that a what? Four. Was it a four? Sorry, so it steps up to a D6. My mistake. I was looking at Eli's, uh uh, stresses. All right, so Sila919 having some trouble with these creatures. Isla and Akemba have raced out of the med bay to chase after the ones that have left. Uh, they seem to be heading for uh, the the cargo bay doors and the exit to the ship. What are you two doing? I'm looking at Isla and just they seem to have an idea of where they're going. This worries me. Yes, um, we certainly need to stop them. Um, and I have my spear. I'm going to start doing like the windmill pattern of like alternating side to side as I approach one so that I don't have to be completely exact, but I want to make sure that I can take one out. Yeah, absolutely. Let's, let's get that rolled up and then we'll see what Akemba's doing to help you out. It's going to be a similar roll from last okay. time. So. Yep, absolutely. What do I have? Uh, you know what? We're going to call this, let's split this this way. Great. All right. So All right. Lightbringer, like I said before, because this is kind of using physical hand to hand or close proximity combat mm -hmm. fight because we're fighting and power because I'm just trying to get rid of these things. Yep. All right. Go for it. Pretty decent. Yeah, all right, 10, not bad at all. Let's see where I end up with a 12. You want to mm. push it? Oh, man. Nope. <laughs> I okay. don't do well. I don't do well with pushing it ever. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, take a plot point. Now, since you all are racking up some plot points during this, I will remind you that one of the ways you can spend those plot points is to include a third die in your total, in your dice pool rolls, just so you know. Mm -hmm. 
That's one of the things you can do to spend them. So Eli, unfortunately, not really able to, to take out these things. They're very quick and they're very small, right? So they're sort of hard to, to get on the run. Uh, what, uh, what was that, a D6 was your effect die? Yeah. Uh, so so Eli, uh, a couple of them get you as well. Uh, and, and the ones that were already getting you, you know, continue to get you. And that's all I'm going to sure. say. Uh, <laughs> but so we are going to step up your corrupted stress by two steps because my uh, my effect die was a D8, so that's going to be up to a D10 for you. You're starting to feel the effects of whatever is happening there, slowing Sounds you good. down, making you feel disconnected. Ikemba, how about you? Same roles before. Yep. Same idea. He's Great. Like, just like aiming to take out as many as possible. Absolutely. Roll it up. Ooh -hoo. Look at you with them D12 effect die every time. 15 is nice. 13's not going to do it. Tell me what it looks like, Kemba. You take this one. It's kind of the same thing. He just kind of like puts his hands out and he's just like feeling for them to try to find mm -hmm. the ones that are close to escaping, to try to find any that are nearby. And again, he just kind of like takes a second, just like like feels, feels them and then just clenches his fists. And this time they squirt a little bit. Because he was not, he wasn't trying to get them on him before, but like now they're just on the ground. Now they're just there. Like he, he doesn't care about the cleanliness as much, but he definitely cares about them leaving. So he sque when he squeezes uh, as many as can be, just get squished. Yeah, and that D12 effect die versus my D8, you managed to clean up all the ones that had, that had up to this point at least, escaped the med bay. Uh, so you're able to, uh, you all can head back in to the med bay if you like to check on your companions. Anything new from Invicta? There are significantly fewer of these things around now. Um, nope, she still is in that, she's in the bad place. Yeah. <laughs> and uh... But at least Ted Danson's there with you. <laughs> um yeah she, uh, she's got like a, a very shaky grip on her sword not that these things are big enough to really hit with her sword but that's just like her instinct sure and absolutely she's, she's looking around she doesn't see anything flammable that she recognizes so she is still not okay 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 uh so there are some of them still left in the med bay uh, Sila, what are, are you going to keep going at them? Are you going to try and get out of there? Within uh, you, you have certainly by this time, since you used notice a couple of times, noticed that your your compatriot, your crew member, uh, Invicta is is not holding up awesome in the back corner of the med bay. Uh, though on the bright side, by retreating to the back corner of the med bay, she also seems to not really be interacting with them. They don't seem to have noticed her or or aren't going for her at the moment. I'm going to make a beeline for Invicta. Mm -hmm. It's just, would you like to explain to me why you are still here? <laughs> oh, is she, are you asking Invicta that? Yes. Invicta just kind of stares at her. Things. Not okay. No, I need to go, but I can't. They're those things. And she's just babbling. Like, this is a legit terror for her. Yeah, absolutely. Like, so words are not... Coherent words are not happening for Invicta. <laughs> and she's giving her that kind of look through her. Why aren't you helping me? Stop asking me questions. <laughs> look. Permission to touch. Okay. Sure. And so I'm going to pick... I'm going to pick Invicta up and a fireman's carry mm. and get out of the med bay. Right. Uh, I, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no, it's not bad. I promise. It's, it's, it's not good. But it was going to be like, like, cue the music and it's whatever the intellectually free version of Take My Breath Away by Berlin it's playing as silent and slow motion. Carries. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, just like stepping on these things, batting them away. I love it. 
<laughs> oh, I love it so much. All right, so Eli and Akemba, you all see, <laughs> you all see as you head, I don't know if you're heading back to the med bay, but you definitely yeah. hear and then can turn and see Sila 919, firemen carrying Invicta out of the med bay at top speed uh, with a few of the things sort of trailing behind them. Uh, but, you know, Sila has has quite the head start. Uh, uh, so what? <laughs> I feel like that is exactly your response. Just like. <laughs> he was just like confused, but also he sees them. Like he sees the little things trying to chase mm -hmm. and he wants to attempt to take out the last of them. Yeah. Possible. All right. Yep. Start putting together that pool. Eli, what are you doing? Uh, I am doing the same thing as a kid. Okay. We're just trying all to right. get rid of this so that we can inspect what we need to inspect from what we were taking care of in the beginning. And then maybe we can, have some solutions later on to the bigger uh, problem at hand. All right, sounds like a plan. Um, whichever one of you has your pool together first, we will go with. Same pool. Done. Same pool, all right. Uh, roll it on up. All right, 14, wait, I've lost your, uh, great, okay. Uh, 14, very nice, no hitches, nothing to deal with there, and I have an 11. So Ikemba, you manage to, as, as Sila comes running past you, you manage to reach out and crush a few more. Uh, there are still a few left, but relatively speaking to where we started, we're at about a quarter uh, in numbers, which uh, hopefully Eli will be able to handle here and now. Tell me more, Eli. Yeah, same thing. Uh, I'm just trying to uh, match uh, Ikemba's energy uh, okay. and try and take these things out. You got it. Um, same thing with my spear because I imagine they're trying to like maneuver into spaces that we can't necessarily reach easily. So I'm just kind of use the right tool for the right job. All right. Uh, I am going to use the corrupted stress. So don't worry about the D4. Roll it up. There you go. Yep. <laughs> uh huh. Um, Let's see. I will buy it from you and step that insecure up to back to a D6. Sure. This is, uh, see, I was waiting for the season. It has not been going great. I was yeah. waiting for the, the part of the season where people get to see Michael rolls. And this, this is <laughs> This is it. This uh, is it. All right. Which, let me which one am I uh, stepping up? Insecure. OK, perfect. I got a 14, sir, uh, and a rough D10 yep. uh, effect die. You want to push? Nope. Okay, in that case, uh, Eli is is going to, I mean, <laughs> at this point, they are running towards you all. Uh, so I feel like Eli is able to get a few of them because it would be very difficult uh, for them to get none of them. Uh, but unfortunately, they sort of overwhelm Eli uh, and, and that is gonna raise your corrupted stress beyond a D12. So Eli is taken out of this scene at the moment. See ya. Uh, Sila is carrying Invicta out and and uh, and helping helping her out. Ikembe, you see uh, Eli go down uh, and begin to get swarmed. Uh, would anyone like to respond? Uh, I know Ikembe kind of wants to just make one more attempt at ridding the team of these little bastards. But. Yeah, I mean, they're all nicely collected <laughs> collected at Eli, so uh, that'll work out well. Uh, yeah, let's do one more of these and we'll see uh, we'll see how it goes and then we'll, uh, well, we'll see how it goes. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good, same role, because you, yep. same thing to do. It, why don't you uh, do me a favor and add in a D4 for your corrupted stress. Aww. All right, there you go. Roll it up. Hey, look at that. That's a 20. Gracious me. This is not going to go great for me, but let's see what we got. It's a 14, and even if I spend one of their plot points to add that third die in, it's still only a 16. So, Ikemba, you managed to, you see your compatriot on the ground 
in trouble uh, and you just reach deep within yourself. You have learned so much about these things with each successive connection with them to destroy them. Uh, you learn more about them. And so it's almost second nature at this point. You reach out and just decimate the last of them. Any other details you want to toss in about that last moment? Uh, he Somehow when he figures out the ones that are on Isla, he feels them, but he also kind of like figures out how to use the tentacle to move mm -hmm. them. Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah. So he's not like like throwing them with force, but he is like he's figured out how to use them without them poking and leaving the corrupted, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. using that leg to jump. So he's like jumping them off of Eli mm -hmm. and then kind of just like does the Gross. same just like clench in the air. So like they're flying and then they splatter got it and that they do all right let's uh let's you know what let's move back to our uh regular lobby if we can as you all have finished this and i don't think we'll be needing uh don't think we'll be needing any rolls for a little bit anyway i probably shouldn't say that who knows what y'all are gonna do but let's make the move anyway Have we moved? I think we've moved. I can't really tell. I'm in the wormhole. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, oh. All, all, I, all I see is our producer laughing, so I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> it's okay. You know what? We skipped the first wormhole, so we had to take our time with the second one. That's all. We all good. All right. So, uh, you, the four of you have managed to uh, take care of these horrifying things. Uh, what are we doing? Um, Invicta. Well, is is Silas still carrying Invicta? <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a good question, Sila. Am I 100% sure that we're in a safe area? Uh, I mean, I don't know, but I, I don't know that any of you are ever going to be 100% feeling safe again, but I, you, close enough, yeah. Valid. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take Invicta as far away from the door of the med bay, and then uh -huh. I'm going to gently place her back on the ground. Yeah. And I'm going to then just start you know what, I'm just gonna change my skin out and then change out my face and I'm gonna mm. change out my hair mm -hmm. and just kinda, yeah. Yeah. I would rather not use this anymore. So I'm just gonna mm -hmm. change faces out and I'm gonna extinct, like just get rid of that one. I'm gonna take that set of my hair and switch it out and Oh my gosh, I'm gonna put it in two buns on the side of my head. Why not mix it up for the finale? Change oh my god. Head. And yeah. And then I'm just gonna like Great. start buffing myself at the same time. <laughs> so is that like putting on lotion after the shower? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is. It's super refreshing. It takes That's all the it. Work, you know. That's it. Schmooth. Uh yeah. I I don't. I don't want to tell anybody what to do, but I'm curious. Um, I'm not. Anyone's here. gonna respond to exactly? I was about if to ask. Okay. I, guess, so, I, I, was like, I guess. I, was I guess what you would is like is I like you'd still... see me faint. You would see me faint, and then uh, they're they're the normal um, coloring you'd see that like deep pink or purple that like runs in their veins. It's getting discolored and slightly clearing out because of all the corruption. Ooh. So. Bad news bears. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. <laughs> Is that a thing that can be removed by Kimba's Biopiece capabilities? Uh, that's a great question that I think we're about to find out if it can or not. Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely a possibility. The things, for all their horror, right, do seem to be biological. Uh, so in theory, it should be something you can work on. Um, uh, we don't need to move back to the roll screen, but let's do a test for this, yeah? Uh, yes. So we can just talk about it. Uh, it's just gonna be the one. We don't need to worry about moving the screen because uh, also it's it's 
we are now at the halfway mark and we got shit to do. It's so uh, <laughs> it's about the same so, set of uh, roles to make. Uh, Io Priest fix because he wants to fix our lie and mm-hmm. knowledge of the things that he's uh, dealt with thus far that give him a little bit of understanding about how the corruption could work. Yep. Uh, two things. One, when you tossed that D4 in in your last roll, that cleared your corrupted stress. You can take yes. that out. And I'm going to use your angry stress this time because, again, you know, uh, that is the last, you know, you need calm to really access these powers. So toss a D4 in, but this will also clear your angry stress. Okay. <laughs> uh, it is a test, not a contest. So I will roll first to set your DC or oh. your difficulty, I should say. Uh, and you use that. And I, this is just really a treat. So we're going to do this. It's a five, and if anyone would like to buy a, you know what? Actually, here's what I'll do. Uh, roll yours up, Ikemba, because I have an idea for that opportunity that I rolled. Done. Okay, great, awesome. I love it. Uh, so, Ily, if you would like to buy that opportunity, Ikemba, tell us what it looks like when you pull back the corruption. Uh, in Ily, a significant amount. Uh, so between the successful test and the opportunity, Ily, you can step that corrupted all the way down to a D8. So, so Akemba, what does this look like? What is it that you're doing? He places his hands over Ally's head and chest and just mm-hmm. focuses and just is trying to find the corruption and then just like almost like he's grabbing it mm-hmm. and just like kind of pulling but mm-hmm. he feels the glow in Ally's skin mm-hmm. and he begins to like glow a little bit from his hands cool taking that out and he doesn't take it to himself but he just is pulling it yeah, out yeah, of yeah. Ally and he like you can see visually the Corruption fading out of Ally's face cool. in those streets. When you get in there, have you ever treated a Misajai before with your bio priest abilities? No. Yeah. So it is a sort of wild experience for you, Akemba, because as you begin to sort of feel the the code, the logic, the process of Ally, you you feel the combination of Ily the the Musalian and Ily the symbiote. You feel them as one and you feel them individually. And it doesn't change what you have to do, but it is it is a small glimpse that you receive into what it might kind of in a small way be like to be Misajai, to have to be two in one, to be, you know, to be a, a true melding of two beings and then there is a third presence and that is what you fight against and it isn't that it's taking over Eli's mind or anything like that but whatever these things did they left some of themselves some conscious part of themselves in Eli in a sort of significant quantity if that's the way we can say it uh and and that is what you latch on to because it very clearly feels different than the two pieces of Eli's whole. Uh, and that is what you begin to draw out. And you get sort of enough of it that you are confident that sort of the consciousness of this third presence has been wiped away. Eli is going to need some time to fully recover from whatever has happened to them. But danger of sort of future complications has has been has passed it seems and that is the first thing he tells the team mm. once he comes out of clearing it uh he's kind of like is everybody's nearby still or oh i think so i okay. i mean unless silent and, and invicta went off to do something else in that moment no. and then uh he, he's kind of like looks at ally and just I was unaware of of how the Misa Jai truly existed. And that is it is an impressive thing. I felt not only your self, but 
it will meld itself simultaneously and also a bond. That is amazing. And I don't understand how it works, but I like it. Uh, <laughs> um Am I conscious at this point? Because I yeah, I, I, I think so. Okay. I, it's it is uncomfortable. You don't you you know very well. It's yeah. gonna be need some art. I'm disoriented and conscious. nauseated. Sure. Um, yeah. Um, Kimba, this is. Uh, I assure you, they're all me. Um, <laughs> there's no separation. Of what you saw was yes, maybe the physical separation, but in spirit, in energy, um, even physically, um, I feel um, I, am, I am all of that. Um, and it's something that I, um, that is more of a boon in my life than you might understand, but um, I appreciate you getting me back to something more of, um, my normal um i think this is going to take a while for me to settle out of and I, I think you would see that the um the purple the deep purple or the deep pinks that you would see it's still taking some time to kind of um go back to a more of what is um the homeostasis of the color of 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 um Eli and what they what they normally appear as the color so it's a bit muted the color that you see well it seems that like it never felt as if you were separate truly but understanding what I understand about what your melding has done helped me to find another being the, the corruption from the squidlets uh, seemed quite powerful, and then it was its, it was an, its own entity inside of your mind. I believe it should be gone moving forward, but I fear if we've all accepted, or not really accepted, but any of us, in kind of like waves to everybody, if you have corruption, we need to remove it in case it emboldens itself because there was an entirely new entity inside of you, and it was all corruption. I uh, Yes, I, I felt it momentarily, and I definitely will seek your aid moving forward, and hopefully um, whatever happened to me helped me help you learn how to um, deal with it in others. I believe I've learned much, and hmm. hopefully this helps us all. I'd like to say too that when you when you're doing the biopriest thing and looking at you know the breakdown in code and stuff, it wasn't that it's code that's different. It's more of um, uh, what do you call this um, when there's like encoded messages and things like that. When you see, it's, it's just like different wavelengths or different kind of messages that come at different segments, and that's probably what you gathered. But you saw the other one that was corruption, and and that was what you 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 sought out. Cool. Yeah, I love that. Definitely. Please. All right. Uh, the two of you uh, sort of have this moment. Uh, Eli's going to be okay. Um, we can pan over real quick to Invicta and Capsile 919 if there's anything that you all want to leave us with. I don't know how Invicta is feeling. I don't know if she's coming out of uh, the paralysis a little bit now that things have calmed down a bit or where are you, where are we, you two? Um, Invicta is, is a little shaky, mm -hmm. but she, she's looked around and realized she's outside, that those things aren't around, that there's none on her. She's done like the, ah, get yeah. off me, get off me and realized, yeah. okay, there's none on me. <laughs> and she looks around and sees Sila. And if a blush would show a blush and embarrassment would show through her fur, she would be so red right now because she feels she feels so embarrassed and humiliated, but she's really glad that Sila took care of her. And uh she goes over and she won't look her in the eye because she's she's not okay. It's like, um, thank you. 
I'm I'm grateful that you were able to get me out of there. Permission to engage? Yes. Granted. I would like to preface this by saying preface. I don't want to anyway, moment. I w- I am not a hugger. Okay. Not her Engage oh. hug. <laughs> and Invicta gives her a hug. She's just like, this is, in the back of her brain, she's like, I'm really freaked out. This is the most awkward hug I've ever had in my life. But Sila has growth. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. Can I do three pats on the right shoulder? <laughs> Perfectly sure. pressured, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and we've not lost too DJ. much, not too like invasive, but just right. the right amount of pat, pat, pat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. So the uh, four of you collect yourselves. Uh, Bertrand sort of ambles back to the ship. Uh, to inform you all that the large ship in the sky seems to have taken leave. Uh, not not just disappeared, because Bertrand knows that that's a thing they can do, but they were, uh, uh, people on the surface, himself included, watched it uh, flee the the air, the space, space, airspace, you know what I mean, uh, of, of Hathare. Uh, and, you know, they have, they have engineers working on sensors, long range sensors to see if it's still hiding out anywhere near the planet. And they know, you know, Bertrand sort of gave them a heads up about how you all were able to look for the dark spots, the blank spots in the sensors. So they're trying to, I mean, again, Hathoreans are not generally speaking, the most technological folks, but they've got enough know-how to use their sensors. So they're looking for that. Uh, so Bertrand comes to tell you all that, but before any of that gets out of his mouth, he sort of sees the four of you and goes, well, shit, what did I miss? Caleb's <laughs> <laughs> just like, Bertrand, you cursed? <laughs> oh, my, I was that offensive. I'm no. so, it has been such a day. I don't know what came over me. I'm it so was... sorry. Uh, no, I have to apologize. Consider yourself lucky, Bertrand, that you weren't there. That's all I can say. Indeed. Uh, well, I, I suppose, uh, Oh, uh, well, I suppose you'll have plenty of time to tell me. Uh, And he tells you about what happened with the ship and then also informs you uh, that not long ago, they received a transmission on Hathare from Captain Rinya, you will recall, the captain who uh, who assigned the four of you to this mission. And Captain Rinya has uh, dispatched some uh, very small and fast crafts that are gonna come and meet you all on Hathare. Uh, they should be there by morning to escort you all back uh, as sort of a, a, a guard escort, just to get a little more firepower uh, because you are wanted back at Torch HQ immediately for debriefing. Interesting. She didn't really sound, uh, if I'm honest, and, and I don't know Captain Rinya particularly well, but um, she sounded uh, worried. She, wa- she wasn't angry. She wanted me to tell you that. She's not angry about anything. I said I don't know what she could possibly angry about. You all acted in the best interests of everyone around, no matter what some people in government might have to say about it. <clears throat> I don't have to worry about them anymore, obviously. Oh, well, that's what I told Captain Rinya, but she didn't appreciate that. And any, or Rafia, I keep saying Rinya, but her name is Rafia. Anyway, I'm not good with names, you see, which is now canon for Bertrand. Uh, and at any she rate- She wasn't the, mad, was she disappointed? Uh, no, she really did just seem worried. Oh, <laughs> I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. Um, just so yeah, Bertrand- We all know it's worse. I uh, truly. Uh, Bridgman says the the escort uh, small fighter ship should be there uh, should be there by morning, and uh, uh, you know you all are expected to report back ASAP for debriefing. Um, 
you are also, you have also been instructed as you all are making preparations for this, you're also, in, well, <laughs> you are also instructed to bring back the ship and the corpse, but I, I'll leave it up to you all if, if one or both or neither of those actually make it back to Torch HQ. Not with us bringing it. It's not Bertrand can, <laughs> Bertrand can tow that shit if he wants they to. They can put in the, with the extra ships, the fast ships. They can they can have their own, you know, 4th yeah. of July, you know, <laughs> little co-pilot with one of those things if they want. Uh, yeah, they're not yeah. supposed to put it in the incinerator? I, I, I was just told that your orders were to bring both specimens back for study. Uh, So can I go and seal the door, like the door to the med bay where Absolutely. Oh, the yeah. corpse is? I'd like to Absolutely. like just like seal it with foam. Oh, legit. Se- okay. Yes, like, absolutely. Yeah, like legit seal it so nothing can get out or in through the uh-huh. I'm going to insulate like, that joint. Oh, I'm going to have to add this to my invoice to Torch. Oh, dear. <laughs> Uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and the the escort fighters can uh, can tow the the ship if that makes y'all more comfortable. No problem. Perfect. the The journey back to Torch HQ is uh, remarkably quiet. Um, you know, I think. Uh, I mean, you all can tell me if there are any important brief moments that we want to go to, but it has been a long journey. It has been a longer last 24 hours. Bertrand, uh, you know, with the with the escort ships with you, uh, Bertrand at least, and it's entirely up to you all, but Bertrand feels perfectly comfortable sort of setting the autopilot and allowing the escort to keep an eye on things if you all want to rest. Uh, and you can get back to Vitoa, to Musalia, uh, and to Torch headquarters in a few days uh, without any real, without any real interference, without any trouble. Uh, as soon as the Wistful Wish and the escort ships arrive, uh, there is a just a phalanx of hazmat suited. Uh, uh, you know, scientists of, of all cultures that run out to take possession of the Hapalock ship. Uh, they also run out to take possession of the Hapalock corpse. Uh, that obviously takes some time uh, <laughs> uh, to get through the very solid uh, seal that Captain Silent 919 created on there. Uh, and you all are brought up to uh, that same office where we started uh, a large circular hollow table uh, on the other side, across across the four of you uh, stands uh, the Monsagene Captain Rafia. And uh, she says, well, well, it has been quite the journey for the four of you. I want, want to start by saying, well done. This was not the mission mission that the four of you were assigned to. And I truly cannot thank you enough for performing, performing with such a plum, with such capability, with such intelligence. Through your actions, many were saved, saved. Torch, Hathare, and perhaps many, many more are in your debt. I must ask you though, I will need a full reporting of every everything that happened. Are you up up for that now? I would like a drink and food and a bath. Um, the same as well for me. I fully agree with all of that. I would like to discuss doubling our payment. Captain Rafia lets out the tiniest little sort of chuckle huff, right? And just the barest corner of a, of a mouth twitch up. Uh, and she nods and says, of course, of course, you have just arrived from a long travel and deserve a bit of rest and, and cleaning up. And Sila 91. Captain. And Captain Rafia pauses and says, Captain. Sila 919, I will will have to check, 
but I don't believe that that will be an issue. So you all are able to take your showers, get your food. Rafia doesn't actually even call you back to her office until the next morning, uh, understanding that the four of you have been through it. Yes, Eli. Uh, sauna as well for I like to, to sweat out the rest of the corruption. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Ooh, and they make sure that no one else is in there with you because who knows how that's going to go. Yeah. Uh, so all of that absolutely happens. Uh, you are brought back the next morning to give a full accounting of everything that happened. Um, is there anything that you wouldn't share with uh, Captain Rafia about the, the, anyway, the important parts of the mission, obviously you don't have to tell them about the, the nail painting party and the cheese sweats if you don't want to, but the important bits of, of what would be relevant to Torch, uh, relevant to the mission. Is there anything that you all choose to hold back? Um, I, go ahead. I said, not a Kimba, he is all about the cheese sweats and he feels like <laughs> if, the, if, the, if the company wants to work with him, if they can't handle, his love of cheese, then I mean, they, look. They, they shouldn't try to work with him because he's gonna eat the cheese. Absolutely. Uh, so once the accounting is done, Captain Rafia, you know, it takes a while uh, because she sort of questions you for details and, and really gets a full picture. Uh, she sends you all off to take a break, have a meal, uh, but does ask that you return a little bit later. Um, and once you're back, she, uh, she sort of says, uh, there are many things, things that I need to inform the four of you of. Um, first of all, we have made sure that you will be accommodated, accommodated here at Torch HQ as long as you would like, regardless of how you respond to the offer, offer that I will make you at the end of today's meeting. Before then, then though, you four have the right to learn information that you must understand, stand, is top secret at this point, point. I trust the four of you to understand the importance of keeping this, this a secret, at least for now. She sort of looks just to get acknowledgement from the four of you. And she proceeds to tell you that over the last several months or so, torch agents have been going missing around the galaxy. Sometimes small teams, sometimes individuals, and for a long time, Torch was completely baffled because there was no word as to what was happening to them, where they were going, what, you know, really no idea. Parties were sent out to search for them. Most of them came back completely empty handed. In the last couple, two, one or two months, there have been very garbled, very truncated reports that have made it back to HQ. And these reports, didn't make any sense. The, the bits of information and data that Torch received were nonsensical, were a puzzle with the corners and the edges missing. Um, so there was no way to fit it together until the four of you came and filled in those pieces. And it is Captain Rafia and Torch's belief that uh, though the Grand Minister of Agriculture told you all that there were very few mentions of these creatures throughout the, throughout the galaxy and none in the sector near Hathare. It is Torch's belief that the problem is more widespread than was originally understood. There have been more active Hapalok sightings here on Vatoa in the deeps of the oceans. And now Torch believes that these missing teams and agents and confusing reports from around the galaxy likely are related to, and she pauses before she says, related to what, what we now are classifying as, as the Hapalak threat. It seems, seems that though our agent on Hathare was doing as she had been, been ordered, the four of you had had the right of it. 
you are our only four agents that have interacted with and survived, survived a Hapalock encounter. It is the decision of Torch to offer the four of you leadership in a new, new Hapalock threat task force. Research must, must be done. Information must be gathered. And the threat, threat must be assessed and dealt with. You are not obligated, but you will become full torch agents, agents, with all the benefits and responsibilities that that entails. We can draw up documents with, with details if you would like, but I do not exaggerate when I, I say it would be an honor to have the four of you here at Torch permanently. And as the four of you consider this offer and everything that it means, and the fact that it probably means going out and eventually having to encounter those things again, we're gonna leave it for this season. Oh boy. Thank you all so much. It was a rough, gross, horrible uh, session. I apologize for those of you uh, who who were more than you know entertainingly creeped out. Uh, I know that was a lot, and I do apologize uh, if that if that was a bit much for anyone. Um, I did try to move as quickly through and use as few details as possible afterwards, but my apologies if that was uh, more than more than fun upsetting for anyone. Thank you for hanging out. Please don't go anywhere. We are not done yet. We have another hour set for our stream. We are going to take a quick break because we do have a one, well, not surprise, but we do have a wonderful treat for all of you. A lot of the dev team is going to join us here in the call. We're all going to get to celebrate together with all of us and all of you. We're going to do a little bit of Q&A uh, and we'll, we'll let you all know how we want to deal with that. Uh, uh, but we are not done yet, though the adventure is done for now, uh, we still got some content for you all. So hang out, don't go anywhere. Uh, devs and writers and such, if you're in the chat, now is the time uh, to go find that link and click on it as soon as we have uh, gone into the do not, uh, sorry, to the Be Right Back screen. For the rest of you, enjoy the art that we're going to put up for this Be Right Back, and we'll be back as soon as we can for our farewell uh, celebration. Truly, thank you all so much. This has been such a thrill. We'll see you as quickly as we can. Don't go anywhere.
centuries ago, the Malian emperor Mansa Musa sent his best and brightest scholars, explorers, warriors, and artisans across the great western ocean to discover new lands. They were never heard from again. Until now. Join creative director Tanya DePass as Invicta, the High and Blade Keeper. DJ Knight as Ikemba, the Musalian Bio Priest. Michael Sinclair II as Ailai, the Misajai Lightbringer. Christina Ariel as Sila 919, the Lansagane Bio Priest. And Eugenio Vargas as the Storyteller. As they travel the stars, defend their homes, and treat everyone they meet luxuriously. Welcome to the Motherlands. Everybody, welcome back. Thank you so much for hanging out. We have the whole, well, almost the whole crew here with us. I am so excited for you to see this incredible crew of Black and POC creators that have made this incredible season possible. We are short one. Unfortunately, our lead developer, B. Dave Walters, is not able to be with us tonight. I know he was around in chat. I think he's probably hiding from Tanya right now is why he's not here. Uh, but other than that, this is your Motherlands team. What an amazing group of people. Uh, let's go around and, and introduce everybody that you see. They'll let you know who they are, where you can follow them on the internet, because you absolutely must do that, because these people are incredible and deserve your support, uh, and also what they did and what they worked on uh, for this season. And uh, I'm just going to go in the order that I see us on the overlay, which means we are going to start with our producer extraordinaire, the silent face that we have gotten to see every night for 12 weeks, but that you all are seeing for the first time tonight. Uh, Leonie, hi, introduce yourself. Hello, everybody. Oh, good. I haven't used my voice all night. <clears throat> <laughs> Please excuse me. Hello, everybody. I'm Leonie, also known as Gloss and Gadgets. And yes, I'm the producer for Motherlands, the person behind the overlay, who's usually laughing and um, behind the transitions and all of that stuff. <laughs> I also made that very shiny trailer that um, you saw as my present to the cast. I wanted to write their name in stars because they've really given me a gift this uh, this year. And so I just wanted to do a little something special. I'm not an artist, so yeah. You did a wonderful job, and I am going to go ahead and speak for the rest of the team and say thank you. It was really amazing. That's Leonie. Uh, the next few people need no introduction, but they're going to give you one anyway because they deserve it because they're awesome. Christina, you're up next. Oh, no, you're muted in the Zoom call, my love. <laughs> Not anymore. Hi, um, I'm Christina Ariel, and I have had the pleasure this season of playing Captain Silent 919, and she is your Montagane bio priest, badass, cool haired me. I love it. I also love, I, it was definitely intentional, that robotic voice mod that we got for Christina just now, for sure. Michael, you're up next. Another that needs no introduction, but gets to have one anyway. Thanks. Uh, yeah, so I'm Michael Sinclair II. Um, I go by Michael Crits Everywhere, and I play Ailai. Um, they are a Misajai Lightbringer, and just an awesome, phenomenal uh, character to play and, and get to step into their shoes. And it's just, it's been amazing. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's been really great. Absolutely. Moving on down to our second row with our third cast member, DJ. Oh, hi, I'm DJ Knight. Uh, AKA Dewan, as I put right here. I, I think this is the first time I've actually said my government on the stream. 
in any decent fashion just because it's really noticeable and really googleable but i figured like if i'm gonna ever like talk and actually exist with my real name out in the ether is gonna be with this stage of amazing with people. fam uh so yeah it's a uh, it's been a pleasure to be at kemba this whole time because to see a game built uh with so many amazing people uh making it tick is just an opportunity of a lifetime so i'm stoked to be here thank you all for watching Absolutely. All right, taking a break from the cast members and going back behind the screen a little bit. Hey, Gabe. Hi, so I'm Gabe. I worked on uh, mainly like the world building, cultures, locations, creatures. Uh, there were plenty of random moments when Eugenio sent me a message and was like, do you have an idea for this thing? And it was either random <laughs> nonsense or like I'd spent like an hour looking through research of like African biomes and creatures and stuff. So this, it's been a fantastic ride seeing that stuff come together and see how everyone like reacts to it. So Absolutely. Awesome. Gabe, uh, Gabe and Dave have been lifesavers because I got my discord over on this monitor and I'll be yeah. like, I need a name for Salansi. I need an animal for Hathoray. I need a, and also I need it I'm in a, about 45 seconds. <laughs> I'm gonna put this out there though. Considering what Dave did, I was definitely the angel on the shoulder. Like my things were That's like real. turtles and like other bison <laughs> and stuff. Dave is like, make them suffer. Make them suffer. I love it. Uh, all right, moving on down our line here uh, to Vanessa. Hello, ma'am. Hello, I am Vanessa, AKA Pleasantly Twisted. I am the one in charge of all the character art you see. So I did all your overlays. I did all of your starting screen, your BRBs, all of that stuff. And I did the fan favorites of the avatars. And I got to surprise Eugenio with an oh. avatar that he didn't know about because I'm just that kind of person. So <laughs> I'm the person responsible for kind of bringing some of it to life visually. And yeah. it's been a trip seeing all of the fan art. Like this is the first time I've had people make fan art of my art and I'm just like, uh, <laughs> well, am maybe I, you am shouldn't I an have made, artist now. Uh, well, maybe if you didn't want to be, you shouldn't have made such amazing character art. I'm just saying. I I didn't I didn't expect the responses <laughs> that we've got, and it's been mind blowing, absolutely Good. mind blowing, and definitely has helped bolster my self esteem in terms of my art for sure, for yes. sure. <laughs> Good. So it now well that deserved. it's all done, I'm like, wait, I have to keep making good art. Well, <laughs> that's that's true. The one downside, you have set the bar damn high, lady. I love it. Uh, moving on down the line uh, to another one of our writers. Hey, Sharang. Hi, so um, I'm Sharang Biswas. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Sharang Biswas. Um, and yeah, I was involved in a lot of the writing. I did a lot of the culture work and a lot of the like lore around that. I, I, I am proud to have designed the polyamorous art loving robot people. Um, <laughs> I'm very happy about that. Uh, I spent a lot of time looking in like Soninke dictionaries because I'm like, what are the common languages in Mali and will they have translated into this planet? And will that, will that turn into a name of an obscure uh, symbiont species that turns you into the purple eyed lovely thing that you see on screen? And yeah, that was a lot of my work. Yeah, we love a nerd. Uh, because I also, when I was naming things, was like, let me see what this word is in Sanskrit. Uh, <laughs> yep. Excellent. Moving down a row uh, over to yet another phenomenal artist. Hey, uh, I, well, I'm looking at the name that you've got on Zoom. So I'm gonna say, hey, Black Oni. Hello, hello. Uh, my name is, I go by Black Oni, but uh, my real name is Will Wiggins. Okay, cool. I didn't know you... <laughs> Yeah, I don't mind putting that out there. Okay, so great. <laughs> It's a pretty fun name, so I should use it whenever I get a chance. Uh, you can find me at Black Oni at pretty much everything, and I'm just responsible for doing the cover art for the Quick Start Guide. Uh, I took the lead for, of uh, Vanessa here, who did a phenomenal job with the character art, and uh, it's been really fun bouncing ideas off of her, and I'm really, really excited to see all the fan art that came as a result of that, because technically, my piece is fan art, so... <laughs> What a great way to put it. Commissioned fan art. I love that so much. Uh, let's keep moving on down the line. Now, y'all may enjoy when I do a silly Bertrand voice, but this is the man with the voice of butter that starts every stream. And I'm going to keep talking to embarrass him a little bit more before I allow him to introduce himself. Uh, Brian, hi, my friend. Hi there. Uh <laughs> 
<laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for that. That's so this, this is yeah. Um, <laughs> um, Brian Urban Bohemian, I am the voice you hear. Um, I was just really happy to be able to uh, to contribute to this project uh, the way that I did, and uh, it's it's been amazing watching and, and hearing hearing myself at the start of this. I I'm like I'm sliding in to make sure I hear myself, and then watching, and it's just like. I'm mad about that cliffhanger. I'm just going to say it. I'm mad about that cliffhanger. Look, you all had to know it was coming. Maybe not specifically, but I love a good cliffhanger. Oh, we <laughs> Excellent. Let's <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Creeping on down that line, another one of our phenomenal writers, Latia. Hi there. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Latia uh, on the internet as Latia Jaquise. It's my name. You know it. It's fine to call me it. Um, I am the writer for the uh, As Yet Unseen adventure that will be featured in the Quick Start Guide. So uh, I did a little bit of des designing as well, some of the, um, the professions that we'll have in the book, but uh, most of my work has gone largely unseen. I can't wait for people to see it though. We love a surprise. We love a surprise. Uh, and speaking of adventure writers, uh, next up we've got Jasmine. Hi, hello. I'm Jasmine Fuller. Uh, you might know me as that bronze girl. And I wrote the adventure that Eugenio brought to life on camera. I also designed the Hatari NPC race as well as um, I'm doing some work on the space pirate faction as well, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, it was, a, <laughs> I had such a, I had such a fun back and forth with Jasmine because there were things where like, I knew ahead of time, I'm like, hey, I would send her a message and be like, hey, can you help me out figuring out how to name other Hothrays or give me this, give me that. And then there were times where we would finish an episode and I was like, I should really send her an email and apologize for the way I just completely obliterated her adventure. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> such a good job with like, all the NPCs with even the silly ones like Bertrand or or you know um like the, the I love the glitchy voice you you really like uh, brought it to life and also you were so patient with like there were, I'm not gonna lie there were times where I would edit the document like the night before <laughs> It was always good. Though. Like, I loved hopping in yeah, on a Sunday and being like, wake <gasps> up. "Yeah, there's four new paragraphs there." Yeah, that was like regular. That was par for the course. B it described great. it as us like putting down tracks in front of <laughs> a train, and I think Eugenio caught the brunt of my chaotic nature. Where I was like, "It's 3 a.m. in the morning. Let's add six paragraphs to this document. I'm sure tomorrow <laughs> this will not throw him off at all." <laughs> Not at all. You know what, though, truly, and this is something that I can say to any and all of you, I have loved getting to. Uh, Storytell for a campaign that I can go and have this incredible room of talent that I can grab and ask and and feed on uh, and and Jasmine has been no exception so I've appreciated all of that thank you uh, let's see who's up next uh, oh well I, I'm gonna leave you till last I'm gonna do me first because you've got to finish this off Tanya so once again I'm okay you, know, uh, you can find me uh, on Twitch and Twitter at DM Jazzy Hands I've been the storyteller for this incredible campaign uh, and I just uh, truly when Tanya asked me to come aboard and sort of gave me the list of who was going to be working on it and asked me to, to be the, the storyteller for the game, I, I was so intimidated at the talent and also so excited to have a writer's room to run this game like, like an ongoing project for all of us. And it has been the greatest honor of my year to, to bring y'all's creations to life, to facilitate the stories that we tell together and to be a part of something amazing. I mean, look at, as, as we said before we came live in this call, y'all look at the melanin on this screen. It has been an honor and I cannot thank you all enough. Uh, so yeah, I don't know, follow me places and stuff, but mostly like throw your love to these amazing, amazing people, including first and foremost among all of us, our host, our creative director, I'm on Barrister as much as I can, Tanya DePass. <laughs> Oh my God, DJ, I can't stand you. You knew what was going to happen. You knew what was going to do. No, I didn't. Don't make me cry again. I put on makeup. Oh, girl, um, just wait. Oh, God. <laughs> standing ovation. <laughs> Luckily, I'm standing already, so it's a standing ovation anyway. There you go. Um, I'm Tanya. I am your creative director, creator, along with B. Dave Walters. I played your high and all blade keeper, Invicta, and I've been weirdly emotional, weepy, 
not sad because this has been no. the greatest fucking four months of my life. I will never trade it for anything. And everybody you're looking at is everyone I deeply admire. I'm so glad we could work together. And knock on wood, everyone will come back from the holiday and we'll get an email. Don't, but also please don't go harass Twitch and don't harass us. Cause unless you got 30 G sitting in your pocket right now, you don't ask me about a second season. I'm taking a break. <laughs> I'm taking a break. But if you don't got you- 30 G's, I will give you my PayPal right now. I mean, if you do though. I mean, hello. Uh, also, let's be oh, honest. Man. As soon as we know, y'all will know because we ain't gonna be able to keep it under wraps for very long. <laughs> At all. At all. Okay, that's the team. Again, we want to say a huge thank you. Uh, well, most of us want to say a huge thank you to be Dave Walters uh, as our lead developer. Uh, what an invaluable, brilliant, incredible mind who has helped us bring to life this setting, uh, the people that we have met, <laughs> the horrors we have encountered. Uh, mm-hmm. And unfortunately, he couldn't be with us tonight, but uh, we love him and we, we thank him very much for his work as well. So that leaves us uh, with a little while yet to, to take some questions. Uh, I believe uh, the mods are instructing you in chat, but if you would please format uh, all caps so that we see it, if you've got a question, start with the word question and please be sure to include if you are asking a specific team member uh, so that we can direct the question to them. So if y'all will toss those in chat, uh, we will start collecting them. And in the meantime, I, I don't know, y'all, uh, what is, you know what, I'm going to go around real quick uh, and I'll kick us off with the first question. What has been your, I will say, one of your favorite or most exciting or most surprising moments in working on this show? Whether it was part of a stream or something that you wrote or or feedback that you got. Uh, just real quick, let's go down the line with anybody who's got something to toss out for us. Anybody want to start? I'm going to start uh, sort of compiling the questions from chat here while we do this one. Anybody got a moment that you want to talk about? Yeah, DJ, go for it. And then I'll grab Sharang after, uh, Sharang after that. Fan art. Uh, I've never seen... Uh, anything that I was a part of that people cared enough to make fan art at the level that we got fan art for Into the Motherlands. Like, to have a character that I'm a voice, like, like I'm, I'm going to call out a specific person, even though there's a lot of amazing art. I don't want people to think that. <laughs> oh, DJ's just trying to call out this one specific person. No, it's just this one specific person, uh, Remy the Art, would, even today, while we're in the middle of a show, having a show, we we'll just draw amazing things and just post them on Twitter randomly. Like, oh yeah, I'm just watching in the mother and it's kind of beast. And it's just like, D, what? <laughs> you made that in like the time that we've been here. We haven't even gotten to the first break yet. And that's what you just made. Just like willy nilly and calmly. That's beast. And that is a thing that I've never truly experienced at the level that we've seen it for this. So I am... Uh, fully and truly blown away by the whole concept of it because it's just it's, I've seen it happen for other campaigns many times it's like but to be in a campaign and have character art of love that something that, that I'm part of like yeah beautiful I love it's it it's not even just I'm my gonna... character like seeing other characters like oh you know, for being sure interact with being brought to life with artwork it's just like this is beautiful I'm uh, I love it no don't sh- I mean We'll, we'll move along, but we'll be back. Don't you shut up. Uh, I'm going to add a couple of, so we've gotten a couple of questions in. I'm tossing them in the Zoom chat. Y'all don't worry. They're for me to be in front of me. I will, I'll take care of them. Uh, but let's add a facet to this since we got a couple of questions that are sort of takes on my question. So if anyone also, in addition to your favorite thing, if there's anything uh, that got left on the cutting room floor, for those of you who are writers uh, or, or for the cast, if there's anything that was an unexpected character development, you can also include those answers as we go around. Uh, so, uh, Sharong, I know you had something that you wanted to do next. That you yeah, wanted to talk about. Um, first, I want to thank Eugenio for correcting when he says my name wrong, because very few people say my name right. Uh, I think I, this is. I think tonight is the first time I've actually heard you say your name. We've known <laughs> each other long enough, but I really should have done this before. But anyway, we need text a lot. Yeah, you don't hear my voice uh, that much. That's true. Um, so um, uh, this is actually an uh, interesting thing. Uh, if any of you who is listening is a emerging writer, having an, a strong editor is a gift, right? A lot of emerging writers are like, oh my God, editor is going to butcher my work. No, no, editors always make your work better, right? And one of the things that was really interesting for this project is I've rarely had an editor who is also very attuned to um, 
uh, what's often known as sensitivity development, right? Um, and so uh, Tanya is one of the chief, the lead editors. And for uh, a big example is I wrote uh, this one thing and Tanya gave me a very specific note being like, uh, Sharung, this can come off as insensitive to a certain type of mental illness. And I'm not gonna name exactly what, but Tanya gave a very specific note and I'm like, I never thought of that. That is so good. I will change this, right? And so having uh, editors, because often, because I have done work in the diversity field, people ask me be a cultural person and I don't have another person to check on me. So having an editor who can give those kinds of notes uh, was very interesting and very valuable and very cool, both in terms of obviously making the work better, but also making me think, oh, that's something I need to keep in mind when I write in general. Uh, and so that was uh, very um, interesting and, and uh, cool. It's not surprising, but like, cool. I love that. Uh, yeah, Willie, what's up? So uh -oh. I mentioned earlier how, <laughs> you gave me that, right? Uh, I mentioned earlier how, uh, you know, me and uh, Vanessa bounced ideas off of each other. It shocked me how often we, pretty much we're on the same page about things like as soon as mm, we started like, speaking of an idea or yeah exactly we were just we were just like bam like let's use this cover bam let's use that let's go around it, it was just super seamless and I haven't worked with another artist recently that I vibe with as easily and quickly as I did with her so again kudos to working with Vanessa that was dope love that anybody else anything for this one we got lots yeah Jasmine go for it um, I think the thing that was most surprising to me, which I mean, this is sad that this was surprising, but it was definitely surprising, <laughs> was how much everyone on the team wanted everyone to succeed. Mm. And they made sure that I'm getting teary eyed, and they made sure you had the tools to do that. So um, early on, when it became like when it was like, okay, we need the first adventure ready to go, like on camera, uh, Tanya and B Dave had a meeting with me, and it was just like, what parts do we need to build for you to be successful and let us know and we will build that and so everything was based i never felt like if if i mess up it's going to be all on me it definitely felt like this is a team project either we all fail or we all succeed and that was a pleasant surprise because i i'm used to being on projects where it's like if you fumbled you messed up why didn't you finish this why wasn't this done by this deadline but instead everyone was very much like what should what do we need to write to help support what you're writing how do we work together on this how do we come together on this what are the parts of this engine that we need to put down first to make sure that we can all succeed together and that was that i think that's that allowed us to make a great show that everyone we understood that we each had a different role but we made sure that the parts of our role that are adjacent to other people's was supporting them and not dragging them down and i think that that was a really nice, like pleasant change from, I think how sometimes these projects often go, which is, this is your part, I need it by this day, get it done. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, we're gonna hop around because there are a ton of questions and I, we're, Chad, I'm so sorry, we're not gonna get to all of them, but I'm gonna get to as many as we can, as quickly as we can. Uh, I wanna jump over to Gabe, if we could, for a second. Gabe, do you wanna talk a little bit about, since I used you so much for this, do you wanna talk a little bit about what your process was for creating some of the creatures in the setting? Uh, both cultures and some of the other like wildlife that I asked you for along the way. I so when I started doing my research, I was looking at the different biomes that are all, all across Africa because Africa is huge. And in the different biomes, there are dozens and dozens of different creatures. So I was like, what are all these creatures like? What are similarities? And then I started making like a chart for myself of just like randomly generating creatures because when you have an entirely different planet and universe, the way that biology and science works doesn't necessarily have to be the same. There can be different biological evolutions. So I'm like, this thing could have the plating of a rhinoceros and be the size of an elephant and it could reasonably make sense. Something else that I considered was what are the predators like and are there predators? If there aren't predators, it would make sense. Like when we uh, had Bertrand, like we had decided that he didn't have tusks because there was no need for tusks. There there was nothing that he had to spear that was a danger mm -hmm. it was like a change in the evolution and development and it was like those processes were some of the best ways to figure out like okay a lot of these animals have biological defense systems what would they be like if they didn't need them and it gives you entirely new creatures that are similar enough to things that we know it was a lot of fun absolutely yeah and i i think that's one of the cool things also about getting to develop this as we played it was we found out what we needed y'all 
uh, developers to sort of focus on and flesh out. And so we were able to take the time when we knew we needed it to do that sort of like, well, the biological imperative here is X, Y, Z. And this yeah. is how that manifests physically. I love it. I love it. I love it. Nerds. Um, <laughs> let's do, uh, let's see, let's hop on over to, uh, to where's the one that I wanted to, oh, I want to ask the, so the cast and then also, uh, Vanessa, once you got the descriptions from us, what were just in a few words each, what were your processes for conceptualizing the visuals of your character? Uh, so, you know, considering that we created these cultures whole cloth, uh, mm -hmm. and you had quite a bit of room. How did you all go about that? Vanessa, go ahead. So for me in particular, having all the cultures and stuff, especially as they were in the process of being created, was really helpful. But then I have to give a special shout out as well to Tanya for helping out with some of the stuff because when there were, kind of like Jasmine said, when there were little holes here and there, I kind of went to Tanya and I was like, this doesn't make sense. Can you see what this person means? Because I don't get it. I can't draw that. That doesn't even make sense to me. <laughs> no, there was a couple of times like that. And the descriptions really helped. What was really interesting to help flush out some of it was how everyone sent their descriptions. Because you had people like, and I'm going to put everybody on the spot here a little bit. You have people like Christina. Hers was very clean, concise, to the point. I want this. And I was like, okay. And I will keep reading it. And I'm like, I feel like I'm just drawing myself. But I can make this work. This is fine. This is perfectly fine. And then you have someone like Kritz that's like, well, I don't know how well I'm going to do with this. So just let me know if I'm out of pocket. And then sends me this really elaborate breakdown of everything down to the iris color, the aesthetic, how the clothes should look. They sent me like pictures and everything. And I wrote them back and was like, I thought you said you were bad at this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I oh, literally don't understand. I don't know. Y'all level is so high. I was like, I don't know if I if I got the level right. <laughs> I don't. I thought you said you were bad at this. But then the biggest part for me, because of the setting itself, and mm. I know that we wanted to centralize on the idea that this was a black. This is a very very black mm -hmm. tabletop RPG. So mm -hmm. kind of the same vein of Gabe. There was a lot of research going into like different cultures in Africa, different settings in Africa. But then of course we had to be in space. So I was like, well, we need to do this, but with a futuristic spin. And my big thing is color. I mm -hmm. love color. And I hate it when people get into this mindset of being like, okay, it's a tabletop RPG. We got to make it all look rugged all the time. And I'm just like, but, but what if they actually have like fun colors and stuff and still could be dope? That, that's a thing that can work, right? And now that I had the opportunity, I was like, you know what? That's what I'm gonna do now. And I'm gonna show you that tabletop people can be colorful and vibrant and look yeah. like elegance and royalty. And a lot of the colors I used specifically were to kind of call back some of those things, like reading character descriptions. I Lies character in particular went with the oranges and the purples because they were supposed to be someone that was mysterious, but also very ambiguous. And it's like, what are they thinking? How do they feel? You're not supposed to know that. But they still had something that was very bright and attention catching versus someone like Ikemba. Everything from your description of your character, DJ, just made me want to give this person a hug. Like they oh. just felt so soft and so welcoming. And then listening to your first descriptions in the first episode, I was like, okay okay, I feel like this is better. And you are also the first time I ever drew Twist. Oh. You are ever the, fir you are the first character I ever drew Twist with. And I was like, literally with my pen going, oh, I hope I don't mess this up. What if they look like little turds? Oh God, I'm gonna be the worst artist ever. Ah! And then everyone was like, these are dope. And I'm like, you did all right. <laughs> and behold, you oh. were a beast and you remain mm -hmm. a beast. Oh my gosh. But yeah, a lot of it is kind of similar to Gabe's. A lot of research, a lot of looking into it, but then kind of yeah. melding that African culture with something that was very, I don't want to say Afrofuturistic, but definitely very sci-fi oriented. Sure. But I also, I was determined everything was going to have good color. Like I refused. If it wasn't like straight up leather or something, <laughs> I was going to make it have color. Uh, and and what beautiful colors you came up with. It was the first thing that struck me about it, all five of the character pieces. Just incredible. Uh, Cass, do any of you, uh, don't feel obligated, but do any of you have sort of character development stuff that you'd like to share uh, to sort of tag onto that? Uh, look at Christina just Victor. crosses her arms. What? <laughs> I said, look at Christina just crossing her arms. Um. I've been sitting like this the entire time. It's just a defense mechanism. <laughs> I got you, I got you. Um, okay, Silo. I think in the, 
in the character development department. Of like all of my characters are on pretty much anything I do are unapologetically black. And I'm very adamant about that fact. I'm adamant about them looking like me because so often people make it seem like the most far-fetched thing you could have in an RPG is not a dragon or a giant elephant. It's a black person. So Mm -hmm. to have this person and to have the biggest thing for me and probably one of the best things I got to work with Vanessa on was Silas hair mechanic. Like it is one of the coolest things I've ever done because it's just like my hair is important to me. It's a part of me. It is something that I've been made to feel ashamed of. It is something that I have had people come at me for, come up to me and try to touch. But like to have, imagine having that power where someone comes and puts their hand in your hair and you go with a piece of your hair. It's amazing. The thought of it is just a, a beautiful thing to behold. And to be able to create this character who like, is layered even though it's supposed to be mechanical like there was this room to play with this character there was so much room in this entire campaign to just be creative to just step outside of the box to use my whole imagination am i frozen are you guys here? We can hear you. It's a, it's a little it's a little robotic, but we can hear you fine. It's just your camera. Am I good? Yep. I'm looking at the thing and I'm frozen. Does anybody? You frozen, but we can hear you. You're frozen. I, I oh, just oh well. She's well she'll, nope. she'll come back. Yep. She'll come back. Uh, I'm I'm a I'm a hop to another one, and then if we get her back, we'll uh, we'll we'll get we'll see if there was anything else. Oh, that's no. I'm oh. the big. Thing is to be able to create and to create and to play and no, I just restarted it. I stopped the cam- the video and then I restarted it. She is for sure several seconds behind the rest of us. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I love you, Christina, and and everything that you said. You and I talked a lot about uh, Sila as well. And one of the things, if I may, that you also talked to me about was also not making Sila. Uh, immediately like sweet and approachable and nice and and easy to be around which i think is an amazing choice that you did beautifully with the character so you know and i think that's such a real thing that media so often like you know characters that are portrayed that way are the bad guy and i think it was beautiful to watch uh you create a character that was all of those things and was still very much a hero um, let's see. I would love to hop to Brian real quick. Brian, we have a question for you. If there was any inspiration <laughs> behind your voiceovers. Mm-hmm. Um, there, it, there was, this is actually the first time that I've been asked to do something like this. So it was very exciting, <clears throat> but I think my main inspiration was kind of like the old, the older radio storytellers where they're just like, are you sitting comfortably? Because I'm about to tell you something that you're really going to be into. And I, I just wanted to get that feeling of telling you, Hey, there's this really cool thing that you, so for the ad that we did, um, Oh goodness. The adventures, the ad that we did. Adventure for the adventure zone, zone, yeah. Yeah. I was like, there's this really cool thing happening, um, happening every Sunday night. And, you should really like tune in and listen to it. And uh, then the intro for the thing was like a hot mess. I <laughs> was not first of um, all. <laughs> I like, I, I wish that I had had like all the outtakes. I wish I had a video camera on me because all of a sudden when I recorded that every noise outside where I live, every emergency vehicle, every helicopter, every everything. And I'm like, okay, great, 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 great. So but yeah, it was, it was really just trying to, as if I were telling somebody, hey, there's this cool thing. There's this really, really cool thing. And um, 
then yeah, I just did it like 18 times because I got the pronunciations wrong like every time. Well, it turned out great. Uh, all right, we have got a bunch of questions. So we're gonna do a little lightning round for some of them uh, to see if we can get through as many as possible. So Tanya, I wanna hop to you with a couple of questions. One of them, let's say that we have our druthers, we get what we want. Are there other mediums other than tabletop games that you would love to see some Motherland stuff come out in? Uh, suggestions with the question were comics, literature, video games, but is there another medium that you see working particularly well? Uh, animated series, and uh, if anybody wants to make a video game, I'm gonna ask you the same thing my mom asked me when I wanted McDonald's. You got video game money? <laughs> no, let's have a quick moment, because video games are not cheap to make in no, case you right. don't realize that. Uh, if anybody wants even a double-A game made of this between the animation, the writing, the mm -hmm. programming, and everything else, if you got a cool half a mil you, you are burning in your pocket, come holler at me, we can talk. I love it. I and love that's it. For a prototype. Right? Hello. That's not yeah. the whole game. Yeah. Hello. I thought game uh, I thought game okay. design for like four years. And oh, games I know. are not easy to just like, a visual oh, we move something out in the world. It's like, no, that's yeah. not how it works. Even a visual novel is... would be dope though. It like would, if, that would be if cool. we got the coins together, like a visual novel, I think I would, would happily really love that. that. <laughs> yes, please. Um, uh, so, so yeah, Jasmine no, just here with the ideas. <laughs> no, I mean, Utah game design. We we got a talented group of brown folks here, we just need the money, and that's always that's the issue. That's like, it. If the money moves. I make visual <laughs> novels. Like that's some of what I do outside of my time. So, so let's get it. I mean, how they asked for some interactive fiction. Right they asked for some interactive fiction. We can manage that. <laughs> so that can be a stretch goal for the Kickstarter. A visual. There novel. you go. There you go. I mean... And Dave, that's for you for what you did. <laughs> All right, let's hop down. Uh, Jasmine, somebody wanted to know uh, if you could talk very briefly about what you were able to write in advance and mm -hmm. what stuff for the adventure you came up with based on uh, how the stream campaign was going, if anything. Yeah, so uh, we didn't get to play test this because everything was so quick. So I did do a lot of reactive stuff um, based off of what I felt the players were excited about. And so what I wanted to expand on and things like that. I know that uh, everyone's favorite NPC is Bertrand and that literally popped up from my Bertrand that I always have with me. And Tanya was like, put him in the game. So I was like, okay. <laughs> um, yes. And everyone became super attached to him, which was super amazing for me because Bertrand's like my anxiety friend. Um, he's always in my lap when I stream. So then mm -hmm. I tried to build out the lore for that. And one of the big things was like figuring out like when, like naming conventions. So I actually drew upon like a lot of Indian things for that, where we don't always use each other's names. We'll, we'll come up with like brother, uncle, you know, auntie. It's very rare to call anybody by their name. And so things like that ended up getting baked into the setting where Hathor and I call each other by their stations, not by their names, because that's disrespectful. And so it was really cool. It was really cool to kind of like expand on these little facets that came up in the game. And um, I also loved like, you know, some of that was inspired by Christina with having Sila 919 always be referred to as Captain Sila 919 because it's about respect. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was very inspired by that and kind of brought that into like a cultural sense. And it also ended up being a really warm moment that Bertrand is okay with the crew calling him Bertrand because he feels like they're family. Yeah. So. Yeah, I love getting those notes from you. That was such a cool uh, <laughs> thing to, to bake into the culture, like you said. Yeah. Uh, let's go oh, to that, Ohenia. Please, yeah, absolutely, Sharon. I, I think the thing that Jasmine brought up, uh, I think is really important because TTRPG is an auditory medium, right? For the most part, you're, I mean, you're watching these awesome people, but you're listening and having these cultural moments like terms of address, which is an auditory thing, is mm. the key way you are getting these cultures across because yeah we can draw you know fan art of the wazoo but as you're watching the game you're not watching all the fan art at the same time right so those small things about naming and terms of address or even when you do things like the glitching voice and things like that um those things i think are really uh cool ways of transmitting culture yeah yeah it was a good time good stuff. All right, moving on, because I want to get through a few more of these. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, anyone can grab this. Uh, and I know we've all got thoughts on it, but anyone, perfectly someone who hasn't spoken much yet tonight. 
Uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, what the delegation, we've already touched on a little bit. Do you wanna talk about what the delegation and the interplay uh, of work was among all of us? We've already talked about how, uh, you know, about how it was very supportive. Jasmine talked about how it was, you know, obviously we all really wanted each other to succeed, but how was the actual splitting up of responsibilities for you all? Latia, you wanna take, uh, were you reaching for the mic? Oh, I'm sorry. I know you don't have to. I thought I saw you reaching for your microphone. <laughs> Anybody want to take a stab at it? Oh, you muted, my love. <laughs> no, I was actually, I was reaching for my planner. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, um, I mean, but what I, what I will say is that um, even though I was brought on to, to write an adventure, that didn't stop, like, that wasn't where I was restricted. Mm. You know, if, if I had an idea about something that could be used to enhance the world, like, um, I will say, like I, I contributed to a profession that was not seen in the uh, in the stream. So, but like we weren't confined to our boxes. So, if there was something that we we had an idea for that you know could be better was beneficial, or we just like, hey, maybe this thing is a thing on Musalia or the surrounding areas. Like, we were very much encouraged to be like, well, yeah, you know, write it up, see what see what we can do with it. Yeah, yeah, that was such a cool thing. And even for me as storyteller, there were moments where I thought you know, in a sort of last minute moment, oh, I really need more information on this. I'm just gonna do it. And then I'll go back after after the episode and chat with the, you know, the appropriate dev and be like, oh, okay, how do we, you know, shape this? Uh, but yeah, absolutely. We all had our jobs and then we all used our inspiration. I love it. Uh, all right, real quick, there's a couple of these that are easy questions. One of them, uh, Cass, did we find the chat distracting? Very rarely. You all are amazing, and these are pro streamers up here, uh, so it was fun to watch you all having a good time with us. Uh, are there more cultures that haven't been revealed? Yes, uh, some of them have started to be developed. Some of them uh, we have ideas and kernels for, but we haven't had a chance to flesh them out. So yeah, there is a whole galaxy worth uh, of more cultures that we will hopefully get to to show you all eventually. Uh, is the digital dice roller that we've been using available? Not at the moment. We, because we were able to partner with the folks over at Cortex, uh, we had access to a sort of prototype beta system that they gave, that they set up for us. Uh, eventually, I am absolutely sure that Fandom intends to have something available, uh, but at the moment, uh, that was just for us, and we feel very special for that. There are a ton more questions and I would love to get to them, but we do have one final surprise uh, that we want to share with you all. Uh, I, have, I have alluded to this on multiple occasions tonight. And I'm gonna say it all over again because it's 100,000 million infinity percent true. Those people, these people that you see up here on screen tonight would not be here without Tanya to pass. She had an idea, she got in touch with all of us, she invited us here, she got a budget, she has paid, she has made sure that we all get paid for our time and she has done something amazing. And there is no way on this earth that we could ever thank her enough, but this is our attempt. We had a little something special put together for you, Tanya. So let's see what it is. Okay, transitioning. Three, mm -hmm. two, one. Ta-da. This is just a little something that I'm gonna have printed up and I will send to you so you have a physical copy of this beautiful piece. It is signed by the vast majority of the team. We all sent our signatures in so that you could have a little piece of each one of us. Uh, it is not enough, but it's what we could do for now for you. Thank you for being a beast. Thank you so much for all your guidance, all your hard work, and the opportunity that you put in front of each and every single one of us. Oh, you guys are gonna make, well, you're making me cry. When Girl, other people same. cry, I always cry. <laughs> Girl, no, same. We're gonna start the chain cry. <laughs> yes, we are. We are chain cry? sympathetic oh, no. criers, y'all. No. Chain crying. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what is. that's what we needed. That's what we needed. There we go. The 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 past. Past. Tanya. For real though. I mean, sometimes Thank you, you gotta get so the much. Listen, Sorry. hang on, DJ. Yes. I'm saying no because I literally the best part about working on this piece was the fact that I was working on both surprises at once. <laughs> <laughs> And so yes. he hit me up and being like, I want to surprise Eugenio. And then Eugenio is emailing us saying, okay, I want to surprise Tanya. And I'm just sitting in my desk going. Mm -hmm. 
I need how many y'all to get through quarantine and go get a drink? I am what telling are we you. Doing? Yeah, I mean, yeah. what are, what are we doing? doing? <laughs> if anything needs to happen, it should be another one of these meetings with all of us, just like oh, with yeah. drinks and just like chilling oh, and yeah. just having a conversation over a libation. Because, mm-hmm. for real, like I feel like that is perfect. Because Eugenio has been putting voice to so many people, like all of the people on the screen right now. Everybody's work. Eugenio's putting voice to it and giving us purpose to interact with it. Tanya brought us all together. So like, yes. of course they both deserve that. And I'm I'm excited to be here because seeing all of the things that all of you have done to make this work and to just get this melanin magic out here to the world is an honor. And I will that's, say as a writer, I don't know is. if you all know how exciting it is to see a cast <laughs> and a DM interpret what you have written. Like, it is so exciting to be like, I wrote that and you're playing that. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fun and ego boosting, which is, you know, very important during COVID. During COVID, it's super it. important. So, yeah. You know it. You know it. Um, I, it's, it's also cool to see everybody because for me, so yeah. many of you were email addresses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Real talk. True. I haven't Truly. to see your beautiful faces or hear your voices. So that's that's cool. This is awesome. I, I, just I know you see. very well through Gmail, though. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're like family through Gmail. Uh, <laughs> Michael, did you add something? Yeah, I just wanted to say like thanks to Tanya for taking a chance with me and everyone here who's like created this awesome story. Uh, things in the background, cultures, like I felt like all those cultures I felt because I've interacted with those cultures through my life. So like everything just felt so organic. Um, and through all that, I got to play such an amazing character because of everyone here and it, such a special, amazing opportunity to work with everyone and just to be with everyone here it's you you all are just uh top notch so I'm just super I, proud to be part of this i want to say one of the best moments of this project was technically during an interview with tanya when someone asked us well what about uh like colonization we're like what about it like it was <laughs> that, that moment rob was like yes this is why this there are many reasons why when Tanya asked me to work with her, I said yes. But this mm-hmm. is sure as hell one of them. Because yes. any any question that was obviously irrelevant, Tanya was like, Tanya will say, that's irrelevant. And I'm just like, yes. anytime, anytime someone's pissing me off, I will buy you a drink, I will buy you a steak, but I'm calling you. I'm calling you. I'm gonna need you to be there to tell them what they need to hear. Like in front right. and, and that was that was every conversation afterwards. Like, well, like, is is there any like this? Is there racism? No. Why? Because we are black and said no. Like it, and that's, that's it. the end of story. And then we just made this game, and there were like there were so many questions that people had about stuff that had no relevance to the story. And every time Tanya was like, "It's not relevant." I've had to explain why it shouldn't be re- relevant to other people. <laughs> I never had to explain any of that to her. And it made no. designing this so freeing and satisfying yeah. and black and brown yes. and melanin. <laughs> and yes. It's, it's the same energy with doing like the designs and stuff too, yeah. where it's like, I didn't have to worry about, oh, is this gonna be too ethnic five me? Is this gonna be <laughs> is this gonna be something I'm gonna have to explain my design decision? Oh, no. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. Do I feel like dealing with this? Hey, y'all, should I should I dumb this down? I don't need. And then it's like I could just design something, and it was just like this is the aesthetic I want to go for, and I would send it. And Tanya's like, I fucking love it, and I'm like, Yes. Okay. I wasn't. I, okay. Sure. Yeah. I'm just gonna keep moving, and it just it's like Gabe said. It was so freeing because I could just design. I could just design. Yeah. And I didn't have to worry about, oh, this is too black. Oh, this is Now, too hold black. on, though. Let's, I'm going to be that person because it's my channel. And I've been drinking comes. the whole fucking show. We know that there's are, there are some black folks that have been like, oh, can you tone this down? Well, because what do we say, Tanya? What do we What's say? What's the phrase? What's the phrase? Uh, as my dear departed grandmother, Marguerite V. DePass said, not all skin folk is kin folk. Marguerite, truly, um, truly, and you know, after all of you fucking made me cry like three times today. <laughs> if you didn't cry too. after that reveal, I was gonna be mad at myself. Yeah, truly, same. <laughs> I was gonna be mad at myself. I, I lie. It wouldn't uh, be your fault if I'm emotionally broken. <laughs> I think the really important thing to remember is. 
Oh uh, my course, goodness. Of course, in, in games and media, there is room for media about colonialism. There is room for media about racism. But this doesn't have to be it, right? No. Like, just oh, because no. other media can be about that doesn't mean every medium should be about that. And we are allowed, yeah. people are allowed to imagine in speculative fiction, right, mm -hmm. where the title says speculative, in science mm -hmm. fiction fantasy, we're allowed to imagine futures and worlds that are different in ways that we want them to. And I think it's it's yeah. irritating when someone's like, but why is, doesn't this exist in the world? Like, because our authorial voice says it does not, right? Right. We have certain themes we want to explore and certain themes we want to not explore. And just because it's a our part characters. of history doesn't mean it's our only history, right? Like, mm -hmm. culture existed before slavery. Culture existed before <laughs> colonialism. And I'm sorry, yeah, our yeah, characters were answer. suffering because no. of the situations they found themselves in, not because they were black. Yes. Like our, because our characters were suffering and having, having experiences as whole people and not having to add an extra layer of suffrage just for existing. And that's so fucking cool. Yeah. To just be able yeah. to I exist. Mean, yeah, I want to add on, on top of that. It's just an act of resistance in itself. Yeah, I want to add on top of that. 2020 has been a year. Like, can't we just be happy? Can't we just have a nice thing? Like, why does it have to be suffering? Like, why, why does it have to be a performance of suffering? And I know that also absolutely. I also absolutely. just love the answer to the response. Like, due to Tanya's responses to that question, somebody could be like, "Hey, man, why no colonizing?" And you could just be like, "Nah, it's not relevant." <laughs> it's not relevant. <laughs> That's, That's it. it. You don't That's have it. to add anything else. You don't have to add it's not relevant. You don't have to add anything. Cause not. Cause nah. That's why. That's like, it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Good game. That's it. And like, we don't have to justify anything. And just like, nah, that's not. We're not here for that. Yeah. Cause nah, that no is a complete sentence. Truly. Right? All right. I want to give. I want to give Tanya a moment to uh, <laughs> if if she's got something. Cause <laughs> clearly we all have feel some kind of way about all of this. Uh, but I, I do want to um, give you a minute, Tanya. Oh boy. Um. Well, one, thank you for the gift. Not just the art. But your time, because 12 weeks, three hours on camera, half hour before, time after to decompress, letting me email you at all random ass hours, messaging Eugenio like, he's awake, I can send him a message. <laughs> um, messaging Vanessa and going, okay, she's got a meeting, she's also on Eastern time. And going, Jasmine's live for like eight hours, I'll get an answer at midnight my time, but that's okay. <laughs> you know, with DJ, I'm like, Depending on what it is, I may just ask you in chat because I need a quick answer. I'm gonna leave you alone. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't answer shit on the cell phone. Like if I'm live, I don't, I don't see my cell phone at all. Like I get in trouble for that shit in the house. Like what's, what's a cell phone? I am I'm focused right now. My bad. <laughs> no, but you know I one I'm I'm incredibly grateful that you all said yes, and that's everybody in this call. It's Dave. It's Brian. Brian is the person on this call that's, no, that's known me the longest since live journal days. <laughs> you just out wow. something. No, did not consent, I did not consent to that information reveal. I didn't say what I knew year it was on live him. journal. I didn't say what year on live journal. We could have been. <laughs> we could have been the last one. Teams. That's right. <laughs> the, the last one. The last. You know that last one. <laughs> but you know, I I've always wanted to tell stories that you know aren't about pain aren't about anger aren't about fucking slavery because you know i got no shame in it i'm going on 50 years old i'm i'm closer to 50 than i am to 40. and after the things that i've experienced the things that i've seen going to museums going to the smithsonian smithsonian in washington and seeing you know literally the journey from slavery to president obama and all the things that we've seen and experienced that all of us have expe experienced as people of color, black folks, queer folks. I could not fail myself. I could not fail you or the people that come back every week by giving you some bullshit 12 years of slave green mile fucking torture porn. I wanted a joyous ah, story. I wanted us to succeed and the problems we have are because there are problems. Not because, oh, poor us, we're black, we're brown, we're, but we're just in space doing this shit. No hotepery, none of that bullshit. 
this is the story we got to tell and then even if we don't get another season you all have made me beyond proud and honored and i don't say this lightly because those of you who know me know this i love each and every one of you so thank you well if i may i think i speak for everyone on this call and dave to say that the feeling is mutual the honor is mutual the joy that we all get to feel at working on a project like this with these people. Shit. Okay. <laughs> don't you do, don't you. Nope, you I'm not doing you it. Got this. <laughs> is got is this. mutual, is Yo, mutual. You had your, I Truly. hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm good now. now. We I know, <laughs> no, that's legit, I feel that. That's fair, that's fair. I'm gonna go into the document, reject all your notes. <laughs> <laughs> No, but truly, it is. It has been an honor. It has been a joy, and you all can see. Those of you watching can see. There is so much joy in this group of people, and what a what a gift to get to work on a project with this many joyful human beings. Thank you all. Thank you, Tanya. We are a little bit over time. Thank you all for sticking around and hanging out on this stream. Unfortunately, at the moment, there is not much more to say. You all will hear news if and when we hear it. But for now, from every single one of us, thank you. As always, please stay safe. Please stay healthy. Please wear a mask over your mouth and nose. And from all of us in the motherlands, be luxurious to one another. See you when we see you. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye now.